strike on a two-hitter by Ray Harris. Texas A&M bounces back to win the second game of the series here this afternoon, 6-1, behind a brilliant performance by Sean Edeker, Russ Roberts. Yes, sir, Snedeker definitely did very well, increased his record to 4-0. Curveball was definitely his pitch today, struck out a handful on the curveball. And Nick Felix came in and did a good job in relief. Picked up his first relief out of the bullpen. He's been a starter all year long, and now he's got a relief. He's filling in the role the Aggies are asking him to complete. He's doing a good job. In game three of the series, the rubber game, Arkansas sends a big left-hander, John Seabuhar, to the mound, and four Texas A&M. They haven't told me yet, as a matter of fact. I'm not positive. Mark Johnson keeping it secret. We'll have it for you in just a few moments. Arkansas, 21 and 7 on the year. Now 1 and 1 in league play, as is Texas A&M. The Aggies are 27 and 6 on the year. Coming up, game three of the series between Arkansas and Texas A&M on HSE. It's time for lifestyles of the original party animal with the grand poobar of partyometry, Bud Light's own Spuds McKenzie, as he's planning tonight's big bash. His fans watch as he tans his way to party elegance. A facial and massage, and Spuds McKenzie is ready to party. And Spuds parties with only Bud Light. He knows everything else is just a light. Real bass fishermen are a special breed, always hungry for more how-to information. You know, 20 years ago, I started the Bass Angler Sportsman Society to provide the absolute best benefit in how-to information for the serious bass fishermen. Now, I'm inviting you to join over half a million other bass members. One of the biggest member benefits is the Bassmaster Magazine, 10 big issues a year where you'll learn how to use the right lures and how to be a better bass fisherman. Helping you catch bass is what we're all about, and Bassmaster Magazine is packed with articles from nationally known bass fishing pros who will teach you their bassing secrets. To join bass now, call us toll free, and here's how. In addition to 10 big issues of Bassmaster Magazine and full membership credentials, you've got a free tackle pack including auger tail worms, true turn hooks, strand line, spinner bait, and the free book Jackpot Bassin. To join, call 1-800-762-3100. Send no money. We'll gladly bill you. We're at George Cole Field in Fayetteville. Mike Neal along with Russ Roberts set for game two of this afternoon's doubleheader between Arkansas and Texas A&M. John C. Bihar on the mound for Arkansas taking his warm-up tosses as these two teams get set to go at it in the rubber game. Texas A&M won the first game this afternoon by a score of 6-1. Sean Snedeker picked up the victory. He's now 4-0 on the year. Let's set the Arkansas defense for you. First of all, behind the plate, Jimmy Kramer is at first base. Randy Bob, Kelly Zane will be at second. Rod Stilwell, the shortstop. Greg D. Alexander will be at third. In the outfield, left to right, it'll be Scott Pose, Don Thomas, and Kendall Trainer. And on the mound, Big John Sebuhar for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Sebuhar will come into this ball game with a record of three and one, a 6.75 earned run average, making his eighth appearance and his eighth start. The batting order for the Yankees of Texas A&M. Leading off and playing shortstop will be Chuck Knobloch. Hitting second, playing at second base, Terry Taylor. Mike Livingston in the number three hole. He will be at third base. John Byington once again, the DH hitting at cleanup. Hitting number five, Tom Carcione, the catcher. Right fielder Andy Duke will hit in the number six spot. Hitting seventh, Mike Easley at first base. Darren Dacus, the left fielder, will bat eighth. And hitting ninth for Texas A&M is Kirk Thompson. And the Aggies this afternoon in game two will go with a surprise starter in game two. And maybe that's why Mark Johnson did not tell you, Russ Roberts, because he was undecided, but he has now made up his mind. Yeah, in the open, we mentioned it was a surprise, and Mark Johnson kept it that way. Hitting, uh, I should say, pitching coach Jim Lawler has uh, decided to go with Nick Felix. He will be the starter. He threw only 40 pitches last game as he picked up his first save out of the bullpen. There is an unlimited number of pitches on Felix. If he can continue, he could go all nine innings if that's the way the Aggies want to do it. He's got a great recovery time, and he's got a rubber arm for the rubber game. John Sebihar on the mound looks in as Chuck Knobloch steps up to the plate. He'll be followed by Terry Taylor and Scott Livingston. Should anybody reach... John Byington will hit fourth in the inning. The first pitch of the ball game is a fastball up high for a ball one and nothing.
Danny Mascaro is behind the plate. And Howard Hansen on the base pass. Umpiring this afternoon's second game. Next pitch swung on and fouled back out of play. Now block was two for three with two runs scored, two RBIs in the opener this afternoon. He went 0 for 4 in last night's ball game. Facing left-hander John Sebuhar for Arkansas. Sebuhar, the workhorse of this Razorback staff a year ago when he was 11 and 2, including 5 and 0 in Southwest Conference games. He pitched 115 and two-thirds innings a year ago with a 4.12 earned run average. Next pitch swung on, fly ball, deep right center field. Kendall Trainer will get to it and make the catch. So Knobloch flies to Trainer in right. There's one out, and here's Terry Taylor. See, Mark Johnson's juggled his lineup up quite a bit. Taylor in the first game was hitting in the uh, about fifth or sixth slot. Now they moved into number two. Knobloch was hitting second. Now he's moving one, and they moved number one Thompson all the way down to number nine. So a lot of good hitters, and Mark Johnson just places them at which ones are the hottest. John C. Buhar, 14 and three during his career at Arkansas. Taylor trying to lay one down and bunted it foul on the third base side. CBR struck out a school record 106 batters last year. He has been drafted twice by the San Francisco Giants, but has elected to stay in Arkansas. 6'4, 205 pound senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Played at East. Eastern Oklahoma Junior College. There's a curveball that catches the outside corner for a strike. And it's nothing in two to Terry Taylor. Taylor one for three in the first game. Hitless in two trips to the plate last night in game one. Breaking pitch misses outside. One and two. Fans here. At George Cole, enjoying the sunshine. Those that are in the sunshine, those that aren't, aren't enjoying the breeze too much because it's pretty cool. Sharp breaking pitch. Catches Terry Taylor looking. Strike three call. First strikeout for CBR. And that brings Scott Livingston to the plate. Livingston had that 21-game hitting streak snapped in game one. Livingston was 0 for 2 with a run scored and an RBI in game one this afternoon. And a double in last night's ball game, one for four. Sibihar in 29 and a third innings has allowed 31 hits. He's walked 25, struck out 35. Fastball is a strike. You could tell Livingston liked that pitch. He just couldn't make up his mind. Wait a little too long. He generally likes the ball on. Over the plate to the inside corner, he has a really quick wrist and likes to turn on the ball and leave the outside corner alone unless he has to. Here's the 1-1, one, one. breaking pitch, strike call, and he had Livingston ducking away, and it broke over the plate. C.B. Har with a good curveball. Next pitch swung on, ground ball the right side. Randy Bob at first base will pick it up. And step on the bag, and Arkansas retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We've completed a half inning. Texas A&M nothing, Arkansas coming to back. Spring is just around the corner, and Home Sports Entertainment covers the Southwest Conference spring sports like nobody else. From the excitement and fast-paced action of 20 slam dunking down to the wire basketball games to the premier conference baseball tournament in the country. And in between, we bring you a selection of the finest collegiate competition around. Like doubleheader baseball action, where tomorrow's major league stars are playing today. Olympians and American records? We've got them at the men's and women's swimming and diving championships. We'll also be on hand as the women battle it out to crown their conference champ. And preview the national title race at the Southwest Conference Track and Field Championships. Home Sports Entertainment understands that Southwest Conference fans know a good thing when they see it. And they can see more Southwest Conference spring sport action here than any place else. HSE, where the Southwest Conference tradition continues.
The Razorbacks come to the plate in the bottom of the first inning, set the defense for Texas A&M. There you see him in left field, Darren Dacus, center field, Kirk Thompson, the newest member in this ballgame, Andy Duke, fills in at right field. Eastley, Taylor, Knobloch, and Livingston from first to third. Nick Felix, of course, your pitcher who won, who got the save in the first ball game. Tom Carcione behind the plate. For Arkansas, it'll be Scott Pose, Randy Bob, Kelly Zane, and Troy Eklund, the Alexander, Kramers, Trainer, Thomas, and Stillwell. And Scott Pose has stepped to the plate in the first pitch from Felix. Swung on and foul out of play. Third base side, nothing and one. So Arkansas comes out. Swinging the bats against Nick Felix, who picked up the victory in game one. Felix, an inning in two thirds, did not allow a hit nor a run. He walked one and struck out three. There's a pitch inside for a ball, and the count evens up at one ball, one strike to Scott Pose. Pose was one for four in the first game. Last night, he went two for five. So he's batting three for nine against the Aggies. Ground ball, third base. Up with it, Livingston throws to first. And a good job by Easley as he digs it out of the dirt. And Pose retired. There's one down. And Randy Bob to the plate for Arkansas. Looked like Livingston was a little hesitant with his throw. That time held back just a little bit. But he fielded it clean, so after two errors last game, he should be back on track again. Bob came into the... Doubleheader today, hitting at 388 with five home runs, 34 RBIs. One for four in the first game. Here's the pitch swung on and missed for a strike. Bob's hit in game one was a double. Hit it off the fence in almost straightaway center field. Nick Felix, 5'11", 205 pound junior. Here's the next pitch swung out and missed. Felix hails from Mesa, Arizona. Went to Westwood High School there and then on to Mesa Community College before joining the Aggies at College Station. No balls, two strikes to count to Randy Bob. Kelly Zane on deck. Bob watches it on the outside corner. Strike three call. That's Nick Felix's favorite corner, as I mentioned in the first ball game. Likes to work outside to the right-handed hitters and will work inside to the left-handed hitters. That corner of the plate looking from the pitcher's mound would be the left-hand side of the screen. Felix struck out three in relief in that first game and only an inning and two-thirds, so he gets his first strike out here in game two of the doubleheader, and Kelly Zane steps to the plate. Zane was 0 for 3 in game one. Game one this afternoon, game one last night of the series, he was 0 for 4. Here's the pitch strike called on the outside corner, and the count will even up at a ball and a strike to Kelly Zane of Arkansas. Nick Felix looks in and now brings it home. Ball two is up high. Felix, of course, a fastball pitcher. We'll use that as, it out, as an out pitch. Also has a good breaking curve ball and will change speeds. A smart pitcher, good location, very aggressive. Zane is set. Here's the pitch, swung on and laced inside the bag at third. That's in the corner and left. Zane's on his way to second base. Played nicely in left field and gotten back into the infield and Kelly Zane he is on at second base with a two out double here in the bottom half of inning one of this second game. Let's watch the swing by Kelly Zane. He makes good contact. There you see it. Ball on the inside corner. Zane got his hips turned open, got his hands out in front of him. Did exactly what you're supposed to do with an inside pitch. Adjust just a little bit and get those hands moving. Only way you can hit the inside patches, pitch is to get the barrel out in front of the plate. Dakers played that ball pretty well in the corner and left, too. He got it back in in a hurry. Troy Eklund, the designated hitter, takes the pitch up high for a ball. Eklund in game one today was one for two with an RBI. 
Last night's ball game, he was one for three. Here's the pitch from Felix inside. Ball two. Troy Eklund came into today's Twinville batting at 247, four home runs, 23 RBIs. Good look at Eklund, big strong guy. On deck, Greg D. Alexander. Two out, bottom of the first, runner at second base. Kelly Zane, a two out double. Felix trying to back Zane toward the bag a little bit. Here's the next pitch. Down low for a ball. It's three and nothing. Zane has eight stolen bases on the year. That's the second on the Arkansas team. Behind Scott Pose with 13 swipes. Pitch from Felix is a strike. Eklund taking all the way. It's three and one. Crowd thought it might have been a little low. Felix taking a long time out there between pitches. Long look in. Now he's ready. Here's the pitch, swung on, fly ball. This could be trouble. Way back, way back it is. Gone, a home run for Troy Eklund. Felix might have taken a little too long with that pitch, thought about it too much, and left it up in the zone where Eklund could get his arms extended, and he sent that all of 400 feet. Here at George Cole Field. First home run of the ball game. Troy Eklund's fifth home run of the season gives Arkansas a 2 0 lead here in the bottom half of inning number one. There it is again. And he got it all. You see it almost to straightaway center where the marker says 400 feet. And Arkansas leads 2 0. Base is empty now for Greg D. Alexander. Pitch from Felix down low for a ball. The Alexander had a couple of home runs in last night's ball game, his sixth and seventh of the year. First ball game this afternoon, he was 0 for 4. The Alexander came into the day hitting 345 with seven home runs, 24 RBIs. Pops this one up. Wendell catch it and carry it a little bit, but the center fielder drifts over. He is under it and will make the catch. So. Kirk Thompson hauls in the fly ball off the bat of the Alexander for Arkansas. Two runs on two hits. There were no errors and nobody left on base. After one inning, Arkansas leads it 2 0. Legend of the Muy Grande. This is the story of one of the most prestigious of all deer contests and honor hunters who are good enough or lucky enough to come away with the biggest of the big bucks, the Muy Grande. It's the story of real hunters with real kills taped in real situations. It portrays an adventure in the heart of what many say is the most prolific white-tailed deer country in the nation. This tape lets you witness rarely seen rutting behavior, such as rubs and scrapes. Learn how trophy hunters use their skills and techniques to bag the big one. If you're serious about white-tailed deer hunting, then this tape should be in your library. For Visa and MasterCard holders, call 1-800-992-1188. Specify VHS or Beta. The Legend of the Muy Grande is a special offer at $29.95 plus $5 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-992-1188 or send check to Muy Grande, P.O. Box 925067, Houston, Texas, 77292. Allow four to six weeks for delivery. Beginning April 15th, Home Sports Entertainment will begin scrambling its satellite signal using Video Cipher 2 encryption devices. If you are currently receiving HSC signal via SATCOM 4 Transponder 11 and F1R Transponder 10, you'll need a Video Cipher 2 descrambler and proper HSC authorization to continue enjoying our programming. For information on licensing and descrambling authorization, or for information on how to purchase HSC, please call 1-800-4-HSE-NOW. That's 1-800-447-3669. 
This telecast is authorized under rights granted to Home Sports Entertainment and is not intended for the commercial use of our viewing audience. Any reproduction or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of Home Sports Entertainment is prohibited. John Byington, the designated hitter, leads it off for Texas A&M in the top of the second inning. He'll be followed by Tom Carcione and Andy Duke. If anybody reaches, Mike Easley would bat fourth. Byington, one for four in the first game. An RBI double. Came into the afternoon batting 393, 10 home runs, 36 RBIs. Takes the first pitch in for a call strike. Big John C. Buhar, the workhorse of this Arkansas staff last year on the mound. Here's the pitch swung on, fly ball, right field. Kendall Trainer is back. And will make the catch for out number one. C. Buhar has retired all four men. He is faced now, and here's Tom Carcion. Byington made that look easy. He took a pitch inside, drove it hard to right field. Didn't get as much on it as he wanted to, but that just shows the potential Byington has. He's only a sophomore for the Aggies, and Coach Mark Johnson really puts a lot of emphasis on Byington because he's got that power. He can go to all fields. He was just a little bit off that pitch. As you alluded to, Texas a and with an outstanding recruiting class a year ago, so the Aggies appear to be Pretty solid for the future. Carcion takes a pitch down low for a ball. Started the day hitting a 276, six home runs, 20 RBIs. He was one for three in the first game with an RBI. Pitch swung on, ground ball to third. Knocked down by D. Alexander, picks it up, long throw to get him. And D. Alexander stayed with it. Ball took kind of a funny hop. Looked like it hit him in a chest, but he stayed with it, picked it up, and He's got a strong arm over there and threw him out of first base. Advantage of playing on turf all the time. You know how it's going to bounce, and you're used to staying down. Both of Livingstone's errors in the first game, he had come up on the ball and went under him. And that's, turf tends to keep the ball down a little closer, and grass tends to hop a little bit. So you'll see the Aggies having a little trouble throughout. Here's Andy Duke, who did not play in the first game. Pitch swung on, fouled back out of play. So Andy Duke making his first appearance of the day and batting from the right side. He was 0 for 3 in last night's series opener, which Arkansas won by a score of 5 nothing. Duke's one of three A&M players battling for that right field spot. Johnson gave three players the go-ahead at the beginning of the year and said each would get the chance. And the one that's hitting the best is the one that's continuing to play. Here's the pitch swung on and miss. Strike two. Nothing in two the count. Andy Duke, 5'11", 180, a junior from Baytown Lee High School. Hit batting at 364 coming into the ball game. We had two home runs and nine RBIs. And those two home runs incidentally came in the Fresno tournament last weekend. Here's a pitch to Duke. He started, held up. The ball got by Kramers. Duke headed for first. Kramers will throw him out. And it'll go as a strikeout for Texas A&M. Nothing doing. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left after an inning and a half. Arkansas 2, Texas A&M nothing. I'm Ray Scott, and most folks know me as a bass fisherman. But to a southern outdoorsman, hunting and bass fishing seasons go back to back. Whether it's ducks, quail, or white-tailed deer, the bottom line is being the best outdoorsman possible. That's why I'm offering you Southern Outdoors magazine, which you can get just by calling this toll-free number. Southern Outdoors ain't a Yankee magazine. It's for Southerners like you who want to get the most out of his Southern Outdoors. Monthly issues are packed with how-to articles and exciting photography. Best of all, you get nine big issues for only $11.97. But there's more. When you order now, from this special TV offer, this is what I'll send you. In addition to nine action-packed issues of Southern Outdoors for only $11.97 per year, you'll also get this special tree bark camouflage cap. Subscribe now. Call 1-800-453-1500. That's 1-800-453-1500. Use your credit card to receive your cap sooner or we'll gladly bill you. That's 1-800-453-1500. <laughs> Turn your high school education into something meaningful, like a career in the United States Marine Corps. Call now. 
Join us Easter Sunday for same-day coverage of the 54th annual River Oaks International Tennis Tournament. This year's field promises to be one of the best ever with the addition of Soviet superstars Alexander Volkov and Andrei Chesnikov. We'll have both the singles and doubles finals for you with the action beginning at 4.30. So watch the 54th annual River Oaks International Tennis Tournament Easter Sunday right here on HSE. That applause is for a score that rolled across the scoreboard. TCU 10, Texas 1. Jim Texas. Kramer's to lead it off for Arkansas in the second inning. Kramer swings, fouls it back on the screen. Nothing and one the count. It'll be Kramer's, Kendall Trainer, and Don Thomas for Arkansas if anybody reaches Rod Stillwell would bat for it. Is that Texas game a final? That's one thing I didn't catch. I think it might have been. Slow curveball floats over the plate. Kramers can do nothing but watch. It's nothing and two. Other scores, Tech over Houston in the top of the seventh, five to three, and Rice beating Baylor four to one in the top of the sixth. Kramers one for three in the first game, watches the pitch up high for a ball. Kramers was two for four last night with a run score. Sorry, Russ. You ask either way, it, the way the crowd reacted, TCU over Texas 10 to 1 whether a final or a middle inning score it's a pitch to Kramer as he chased outside and couldn't get it so Jim Kramer strikes out that is the second strikeout for Nick Felix here in the second game of the day Kendall trainer will bat for the first time today trainer was on in the first game as a pinch runner and then went into right field. But before he could bat, Bubba Carpenter was sent in. So trainer is set. Here's the first pitch to the right-hander. If the name is familiar, it should be. Kendall Trainer is the starting place kicker and punter on the Arkansas Razorback football team. One of the few athletes who plays two sports at the collegiate level. Pitch swung on, ground ball to short. And we're going to have an error against Chuck Knobloch. Knobloch couldn't come up with it, and Trainer reaches on the error. Looked to me like Knobloch just simply sat back. Uh, again, we go back to the turf. The turf balls are generally hit harder. He takes a step back and just waits on it. Here's the swing of Kendall Trainer. Wrist not bothering at all on this one. Got every bit of that nice weight distributed over the back foot. Over evenly, looks good. Rainer on at first, and here's Don Thomas. Right-handed hitter. Thomas swings and misses, strike one. That word, I'm sorry. I... Thomas 0 for 3 in game one. Just got word passed to us that's top of the seventh on that TCU Texas score. TCU 10, Texas 1, top of the seventh. And it'd be the second game of their doubleheader today, so it'll be a nine-inning ball game. Throw over to first. Runner back in plenty of time. Don Thomas, a 315 hitter with a home run, 15 RBIs starting the day. Here's the pitch from Felix. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Rod Stillwell on deck. One out, runner at first. Kendall Trainer reached on the air by Knobloch. Thomas takes a time out to think about that. Didn't quite like the swing. Got caught going after a ball low and away. And that's always a good one that'll get you to swing. Pitch swung on and missed. Strike three. So Don Thomas goes down swinging. The third strikeout for Felix. And that'll bring Rod Stillwell to the plate. The Arkansas shortstop. Stillwell started the day hitting 333 with a home run, 18 RBIs. It was 0 for 2 in the first game, no RBIs. 2 for 4 with a run scored last night. Felix will throw over to first base, and Trainer is back at plenty of time. Scott Pose has moved into the on-deck circle. Arkansas scored two in the first, 
After two men were out, Kelly Zane doubled, and then Troy Eklund with his fifth home run of the year. A 410-foot shot to center field. Still, though, takes the pitch outside for a ball. Arkansas leading 2 0. Rubber game of the three game Southwest Conference Series. Fastball is down low. It's 2 0. Good look at Felix Kendall Trainer over at first base. Not much of a threat. Only one stolen base so far this year. Here's the next pitch taken in for a strike. Two and one the count. Still well, takes a look to Doug Clark coaching down at third base. And now he's back at the batter's box ready to go. His throw over to first base. Again, Trainer is back. Not an outstanding move from Felix, just a consistent of the left-handers. They don't have a they lost one last year who had a great move, Daryl. Runner Pye. going, pitch up high, and the throw to second base in time. And right on the mark was Tom Carcion to throw the runner out. So two to four. If you're scoring with us for Arkansas, no runs, no hits. There was one error, and nobody left. After two innings, Arkansas two, Texas A&M nothing. Hey, how you doing? Good. In fact, I feel like light. Hey. Hmm. What the? I meant Bud Light. If you want the less filling light with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light, because everything else. You all right? Sure, just a little lightheaded. It's just a light. Announcing the biggest sale in Pettigrew Smith's 48-year history. And it's a monster. Get this free. An insulated mug with the purchase of two Wix oil or air filters. So buy a Wix filter and get a cleaner engine and a free mug. There's store-wide savings during the March Monster Sale at all 43 Pettigrew Smith Auto Supply stores. So look for the new PS at Pettigrew Smith. Houston's original and still first. Monster sale savings are available at these Pettigrew Smith stores. Not bad. My job's dangerous, but each stunt is well rehearsed. Nothing's left to chance. Now, there's one thing you can't pay me to do, smoke. You know, it increases your risk of heart attack. It's just too dangerous, and uh, that's one risk I won't take with my life. Let's do it again. The American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Let's watch the throw from Carcion that ended the last inning, Russ. Take a look. The ball's up high, but Carcion's got such a strong arm. It gets him by almost half a step. A good jump by Kendall Trainer, but the scouts are really high on Carcion's defensive ability. Here's the pitch to Mike Easley leading it off in the third inning. Shortened up as if the bunt took a strike call. Give you an idea of what they're looking for. A good time from a catcher down to, first, to second base is about two seconds. Consistently, Carsey owns about 1.9, and that's that's big league capability. Slow curve to Easley. Strike call, nothing in two. It'll be Mike Easley, Darren Dacus, and Kirk Thompson for the Aggies here in the third inning. Here's the 0 2 pitch outside. Well, I think I might be able to get the throw off in two seconds. You mean have it leave your hand by then? <laughs> and the funny thing with Carcione, it's not so much in his quickness as it is in just the strength of his arm. It's just brute strength. Fastball high and inside. Two balls, two strikes to count. Aaron Dacus waits on deck. Easily was 0 for 2 in the first game today and started the day hitting a 277 with no home runs, eight RBI. A slow curve, swung on a missed strike three. Easily goes down swinging. That is the third strikeout in the ball game for 
John C. Buhar, C E B U H A R, John C. Buhar for Arkansas. C. Buhar was one of seven pitchers that was selected to the U.S. national team and won the silver medal at the Intercontinental Cup in Cuba this past fall. Fastball swung on in this strike one. The big it, guy can rear back and just let it fly. It definitely can. We got a couple of hard throwing left handers today. Sometimes you don't realize, especially in a first game that ended up six to one, how really good the pitching is, but we've got two pretty good hitting ball clubs here. The wind is blowing out to center field, and we've had only one home run on the day. Swung on and missed strike two. Observation. Darren Davis here. likes that high pitch. He sure does. Yeah, that's the problem. The, 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 the three guys that can't seem to find a spot in the starting lineup, Davis, uh, Newman, and Duke, all like that high pitch. Uh, they need to get more control of themselves, be a more disciplined hitter. Here's the one, two. He tried to break the curve off and missed two and two. And that's where the Aggies are struggling right now, filling in that right field position. See if CBR picked up. Here's a 2 2 fastball strike three call. You got that one down in the strike zone. And take a look at the way CBR set his pitches. A couple of curveballs, and then comes hard and low on the outside corner. Dacus knew it. He didn't even think about it. He's headed back to the dugout. Missed that one. I'll try again later, coach. Fourth strikeout for CBR and the third straight. Here's the pitch to Kirk Thompson as a strike call. Thompson hitting at 293 with a home run, 17 RBIs. Was two for four with two runs scored in game one this afternoon. Left hander waits, pitches outside. Left hander against left hander, CBR and Kirk Thompson. Aggie coach Johnson moved Thompson from the number one hole slot down to the number nine slot, but he was two for four, so it's not a degrading move. Actually, it's a move probably to pick up a little bit of speed in the lineup around 9-1-2. One, 1-1 one, one is a good fastball, strike two call. Good look at John Sebuhar. Razorback left-hander. 11 and 2 last year, 5 and 0 in Southwest Conference play. First pitch. Breaking ball low and away. Whereas Nick Felix likes to roll that curveball and have a larger break, seems like Sebahar has got a nice hard quick break on it. Exactly. Yeah, it's a Whereas a slider likes to break across, Sebahar's got a hard breaking curveball, makes his and fastball it, that much more effective. And it helps disguise that curveball a little bit because the motion is much the same. Pitch strike three called. And Sebahar strikes out the sides. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We played two and a half at George Cole Field. Hogs two, the Aggies nothing. There's a lot more to taking pictures than meets the eye. And whether you're discovering the wonders of black and white photography or deciding what camera, lens, and equipment to buy, Popular Photography is the magazine for you. Each month, Popular Photography is packed with tips like how to stop motion, how to take better portraits, how to capture the drama of nature at its peak. Best of all, you get the most up-to-date buyer's guide anywhere. Yes, popular photography covers the photo world from every angle. And right now, as a special TV offer, you can get a full year subscription to popular photography for only $5.99. That's right, just $5.99. That's one half the full subscription price. So develop your interest in popular photography today and save 50%. Here's how you do it. Call now, 1-800-257-8888. 1-800-257-8888. That's 1-800-257-8888. Rod Stillwell will lead it off for Arkansas in the bottom of the third inning. It'll be Stillwell, Scott Pose, and Randy Bob for the Razorbacks against 
Nick Felix first pitch to Stillwell as a strike call. Stillwell was at the plate when Kendall Trainer was thrown out prior to Steele's second to end the second inning. Switch hitter Stillwell batting right handed against the left handed offering of Felix and there's a base hit just beyond the reach of Scott Livingston at third so Stillwell he's on with a base hit that is the third hit of the ball game for Arkansas. Now batting. First time the Razorbacks have had the leadoff man on in this game. Scott Pose as we get back to the top of the order. Pose grounded to third his first time up. Left handed hitter. Here's the pitch bunted first base side. Nice bunt. Nice play by Mike Easley. Terry Taylor covering to the sacrifice. Smooth Stillwell down to second base. Good hustle by Taylor on that. Pose takes some pretty good speed down the line, lays it right down the first baseline and dumps it. And that's some practice on this turf, so that ball's not rolling too fast. And it's a foot race between the two men. And just by a step, do the Aggies get Scott Pose out at first base. Carrying out the fundamentals, Terry Taylor. He's late getting over there to the bag, then Scott Pose beats it out, and the Razorbacks have two runners on. Here's the pitch to Bob, swung out and missed. Bob struck out his first time up. Kelly Zane on deck. One for four in the first game was Randy Bob. Holds that bat high, slow breaking pitch, catches the inside corner for a strike. It's nothing in two. Bob didn't like the call. Let's step out and think about it for a minute. It's one of those pitches that crosses on the corner but ends up blowing inside down by his feet. But it, what counts is where it crosses, not where it lands. Good hitter. In case you weren't with us for the first game, Bob had a 30 game hitting streak for Arkansas last year. Fouls one off back to the screen. That 30 game streak of Southwest Conference and Arkansas school record. Scott Livingston was closing in on it until he had that 21 game streak snapped in the first game of this afternoon's doubleheader. Here's the pitch from Felix. Bob swings, foul ball, first base side. That'll be back and out of play. I tell you, you put together 30 games of uh, a hit or more each game. That's a lot of, that's quite an accomplishment. Especially with it, uh, Southwest Conference pitching has gotten so much better in the last few years. You're bringing junior college people in. You're bringing people who've got some heat, got some control. It's swung on, ground ball, big hop for the shortstop. He'll throw to first, and there's two down. One not block. Had to wait on that when it took a big hop right at the last second. He's an interesting story. Last year he was all Southwest Conference center fielder because Ever Magallana is an all Southwest Conference shortstop was here. He's now playing with Cleveland. And Knobloch moves back into his natural position of shortstop and has made a fairly good adjustment according to Johnson. Here's Kelly Zane. I know about seven other Southwest Conference schools glad to see him go to Cleveland. Magallanes for sure. Lethal with the bat and, and better with the glove. Pitch from Felix. Breaking ball inside. Nice stop by Carcion behind the plate to stop that one. You get a good look right there at Kelly Zay in the Arkansas second baseman and Nick Felix. Texas A&M left-hander who came on and picked up the save in Game one this afternoon. Some fine relief work. Pitched 40 or through 40 pitches, and Mark Johnson decided to start him here in game two. Pitch was down low. It's ball two. Two and nothing now to Zane. It's not often you'll find a, a reliever starting again, but Felix, as we mentioned in the first game, is an actual starter. They've just moved him to the relief position. Zane doubled just inside the third base bag his first time up. Swings and misses two and one. And then, of course, scored ahead of Eklund when Eklund hits the two-run homer.
Kelly takes his cuts up there. Nick looks in and we're ready to go. Pitch swung on, fouled again. Two balls, two strikes to count. Zane's a good competitor. Like you mentioned, he gets his hacks in when he goes up there. He's not going to be cheated. To be successful in this league, you've got to be able to compete. Pitch swung on, fouled up, first base side. Easily is over there in foul territory and will make the catch, and the Razorbacks retired in the third inning. For Arkansas, no runs, one hit. There were no errors, and one man left on base. We've played three, and Arkansas leads it 2 nothing. Because everything else is just the light. <laughs> when your state of the heart needs that electric jump start, and you just got to lose those bad news, Texas blues. In Texas, the Ford Mustang is the number one selling sports car in its class. And right now is a great time to buy and save on a new 88 Ford Mustang. Number one in performance and number one in value. Another reason why your Ford dealers are winning Texas over. When only the best will do. Every 11 minutes, someone in the U.S. becomes eligible for a ride in a limousine. Don't join them. Learn to drive defensively. Take the National Safety Council's defensive driving course. If you don't, it could have grave consequences. Contact your local safety council. We'd like to thank baseball and sports information director Bill Rogers and the entire athletic department here at the University of Arkansas for their help and support in preparing for today's games. You see our cameramen stationed around George Cole Field doing a great job, gentlemen. We've got them everywhere. A&M in the top of the fourth. Chuck Knobloch leads it off. John C. Buhar has retired all nine Aggies. He has faced through the first three innings and struck out five of them. Knobloch fly to right his first time. The 1 pitch is up high for a ball, and the count evens up. No Zippo. runs, no hits, and an error for Texas A&M. 2-3-0 and for Arkansas. And the reason it's 0-0-1 for the Aggies is Seabar has five strikeouts and continually starts ahead of each hitter. Fastball. And it stays that way. You bet. One more shot. Let's go. One ball, two strikes. Her ball just misses. He's very consistent with his positioning on the uh, on the plate and his selection of pitches. Very good control. Ooh, as we say that. Fastball low and inside. Did it hit him? Yes. There's that free throw jinx we just put on him. Uh -huh. The Aggies have their first base runner. As Chuck Knobloch is hit by the pitch. Second come right inside. Gets him right on the inside of the right foot, the back foot. Curveball broke just a little too hard. So Knobloch's on at first, and here's Terry Taylor, who struck out his first time. A&M with the leadoff batter on. And C.J. Har will have to pitch from the stretch for the first time this afternoon. Brings it home, swung on, missed. Some heat on that one. Yeah. 
have to respect guys like John C. Bihar and Skyler Livingston, guys that are drafted two and three times and decide to stay in school, get that degree, complete their collegiate eligibility. That's certainly not a knock on those that leave college to turn professional because in certain situations, it's the right thing to do. It is butted and fouled behind the plate. Nothing in two. Many times also the professional club, if you use the education as a bargaining tool, sometimes they'll either come up with more money up front or they'll offer you a better contract. And at times, even if you do decide to give up, they'll consider paying for your college during the winter league if you're doing well in the springtime. Absolutely, and as you look down the road, Fastballs down low for a ball one and two. As you look down the road, the average age of a major league player when he leaves the game, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 years old, I would suppose, still have a lot of time to go in life. A little too early, in my opinion, to to kick back and retire. There's plenty of life ahead. Ball is outside, two and two. And that degree, it sure helps in those times when suddenly there's not any baseball to fall back on. Runner going to pitch slow, and Kramers can't handle it, and it'll go as a stolen base for Chuck Knobloch. Looks almost like he got his feet kind of caught up there. He's tying his shoestring. Uh, makes you wonder whether he might have caught his right foot on his left cleat. We'll find out. Take another look at it. And there you see... Knoblock in the top right hand corner, nice isolation. Yeah, that's what he did. He, he took his right foot and was planning to step behind and get his body back, get his feet back under his body, and it looks like he stepped on his left foot. Would have been a foot race, though, for Knoblock. He got a great jump. He got a great jump. He has stolen 10 bases in 14 attempts now on the year. Three balls, two strikes to count to Terry Taylor with Scott Livingston on deck. John Byington with bat fourth in the inning. Now block at second base. Here's the pitch from Sebihar. Ball four. And Terry Taylor is on at first as Sebihar issues his first walk of the afternoon. Aggies with runners at first and second. Nobody out for Scott Livingston. Grounded to the first baseman his first time up. 0 for 2 in the first game. One for four last night. They can forget about that 21 game hitting streak. Yeah, you don't forget about things like that. There's a pitch swung on and fouled back out of play into the parking lot. And I... Very impressive young man, Scott Livingston. Certainly an impressive baseball player. The pro scouts will tell you the same. Here's the pitch swung on, fouled again. Almost caught a couple of cars again. You mentioned impressive on Livingston. It's hard to decide where to start when you want to list his accomplishments. Uh, and going back, if we can, to talking about those players who decide to stay in college, he turned down a, a pretty good offer from the Oakland Athletics in the third round this past this past year. All to continue to get that education. Talk to Dennis Fletcher and the CBR before the doubleheader this afternoon. I asked him how they plan to pitch the Livingston. And both pretty much agreed that with good hitters like this, there's nothing special you can do. Nice stop by Kramer's behind the plate. You just have to go after him with your best stuff. Uh, good hitters are good hitters. On the flip side, I talked to Scott Livingston before the ball game as well, and he said here lately he's seen no good pitches at all. He just can't buy a decent pitch. The only time it happens is if a Sebohar or a, a, you know another pitcher out there makes a mistake, gets a ball a little bit up in his own, or doesn't bring it as far inside. But he doesn't see a selected amount of pitches. Somebody made a mistake 21 straight games, didn't they? Somewhere along the way. BBR's pitch is down low in the count evens. Two balls, two strikes now. To Scott Livingston, John Byington waits his turn on deck. Not oftentimes, though, Livingston can turn a, a bad pitch into a hit. Just sheer ability. 
Pitch swung on and tapped foul down the first base side. Coach Bill Hickey. Would you say that's confidence on the part of the Aggies as we look over toward the dugout? There are three guys out there with batting helmets on. It's Everybody a, wants to get in the back. It's circle. a hungry ball club. <laughs> there you see them all. They're ready to go. Line forms at the rear. They say hitting is infectious, and, and that's that's usually the truth. If one's getting a hit, the next guy says, if I'm going to ride back on the bus with him without a hit, I'm going to have to hide my face. Boy, I tell you, he's got the jobs. Troy Eklund and John Byington. Can you believe uh, that's what I want? A, a job as a designated hitter. What a life. Kick back over there in the dugout and enjoy the baseball game and uh, take your cuts when it's your turn. Pitch swung on and fouled at the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Just kidding, of course. Yeah, it takes a special type hitter to do that. It's really hard to concentrate. If you're having a bad game at the plate, usually you can go out in the field and make up for it or keep yourself going, at least keep your blood flowing. But when you're a DH, you only get a few ABs. A you got to make the best of them. C.B. Hire spins, does not throw down to second base, just wanted to chase the runner back. Livingston waits, and here's the offering from C.B. Hire. Swung on and fouled out of play. Final results are in from the Morris Williams Intercollegiate Golf Tournament down in Austin, Texas. Played at the Barton Creek Country Club, Texas. Is the team winner 1077 strokes Oklahoma State is second six shots behind Texas Oklahoma finished third Arkansas was fourth Houston Baptist finished fifth Bob Estes of Texas was a medalist at eight under par 208 at rounds of 68 66 and 74 pitch to Livingston swung on and missed strike three that's the sixth strikeout for John CBR and he got a take a look tough hitter. Livingston keeps his hands back. He looks good at this point. He strides forward. That's just a doggone good pitch by Sebahar. You can't take anything away from Scott Livingston. You give all the credit to Sebahar on that when the ball was over the plate. It just continued to move away from Stone as they call him and that's the way it works. Here's Byington now who flying to right his first time up. 0 oh for 1 in this game, 1 for 4 in the first game this afternoon. Pitch got away from CBR. Breaking pitch stayed up high. Got to go down in the sun between games. Felt like a different day down there, didn't it? We've got some breeze up here for sure. Get in the shade and it cools off considerably. Pitch from Sibihar up high but swung on. Fouled back into the glove of Jimmy Kramers. Another reflection of the importance of this game when you have two nationally ranked teams. We haven't lost too many fans between a seven and a nine inning. And it has picked up uh, a little, got a little cooler here. The wind's picked up, but these diehard Razorbacks are still out pulling for the Hogs. One ball, one strike to count. Here's the pitch from Sibihar. Breaking pitch stayed away again. Chuck not blocked down at second base. Hit by a pitch and then stole second. Terry Taylor walked. He's down at first. And John Byington trying to chase somebody home with one out. Pitch from Sibihar. Swung on. Fly ball popped up. First base side, Randy Bob giving chase, but can't get to it. Just falls inside the fence down the right field side. Long way for Bob to go, and Kendall Trainer had a long way to come from right as well. Couple of ducks on the pond, as they say, man on second, man on first. Sebahar heads back to the mound, and John Byington, 36 RBIs so far, picked up another one in the first game today, makes 37. He's trying to pick up a couple of more. Hey, 
Two and two the count, and now Subihar steps off the mound, and Bayank backs out of the batter's box. Subihar brings it home, breaking pitch, strike three call, Byington knew it. Seventh strikeout for CBR, and that's seven strikeouts in three and two-thirds innings. That was just a matter of Byington guessing, probably fastball, and he ended up seeing a, a breaking pitch and just... The went. last six outs recorded by Sebuhar have been strikeouts. Broken only by the hit batsman in the wall. Pitch to Carcion is inside for a ball. Carcion grounded a third his first time up, one for three in game one with an RBI. Started the day hitting at 276. It's swung on, fouled straight back to the screen. Count evens up, one ball, one strike. Take a look at Chuck Knobloch on second base. Terry Taylor owed first, a couple of the freshmen for the Aggies. Freshmen last year, sophomores this year, and probably both to have another good year next year before the professional scouts begin to hound them for their services. One ball, one strike. Sibuhar comes inside. Ball two. Sebohar does not work in a hurry. He's not real slow, but will take his time. He concentrates hard out there on the mound. Pitch down low, three and one. Kramers goes out to say something to Sebohar. This may be one of the first few times he's fallen behind a hitter. He's been so consistent in the first or second pitch getting a called strike or a swing and a miss or a foul ball. He's really had the cards stacked in his favor. Three and one the cap. Does not want to load him up here. Pitch swung on. There's a ball that's laced into left center. Nobody's going to get to that one. Scott Pose chasing it down. Two runners are going to score. And Byington ties it up, or Carcion rather, ties it up with the double to left center. He just sat back and waited on the fastball and laced it into left center field. And this one is all tied up. Let's take another look at this one as Tom Carcione. I went down and got after it. The ball was down by his knees. Took it all the way out just past the 385 sign. And with the speed of Knobloch and Byington, two run scores, so you pick up a couple of RBIs and that brings Andy Duke to the plate for the Aggies. Well, I tell you what, Knobloch, I don't know about his speed, but I'll tell you about Terry Taylor's. He was pushing Knobloch when they crossed the plate. I said Byington, I meant Taylor. Taylor was making up ground. Those two were rivals in high school, as a matter of fact. They've become best of friends here in college. No doubt about which one of those two would win a foot race. Pitch swung on, fouled off. Perhaps Knobloch was easing up a little bit. Well, you say that. He's had some trouble with a hamstring, but it's completely cured now. He might have just been conserving energy, as we used to call it. Good look at Andy Duke there. On the golf course, they call that sandbagging. <laughs> Duke struck out his first time. We're tied at two. Breaking pitch from Sibihar, high and away for a ball. Andy Duke, right-handed hitter. Straightaway stance, Sibihar's fastball stays upstairs. Duke's one of the utility players for the Aggies. He can play third, short, second. He plays all the outfield positions. Has even been caught with a mask on a couple of times trying to catch batting practice. 
That's pretty utility. Yeah, he, he does everything. Got to have those versatile players on your ball club, though. They're an important part of every ball club. You got to have one or two of those guys that can go play where you need them. Pitch is swung on and missed. Two balls, two strikes to count. Two outs. We're in the top of the fourth. Aggies have scored a pair here to tie the game at two. Texas A&M with only one hit. Next pitch is low and inside. You know, if Duke could get the bat working, he has everything else in his favor. He's got better speed than Degas and, uh, uh, and Newman. He's also got a stronger arm than either of those two. So it's just a simple matter of his offense picking up, and he's got himself a starting spot. That job's just somebody's for the taking, isn't it? Pitch from Sibihar, fastball up high, and down to first base goes Andy Duke with a base on balls. That's the second walk issued by Sibihar and the second in this inning. So he hit knob lock on the foot. Dave Jordan, the Arkansas pitching coach, on the way to the mound to talk with his big left-hander. Knob lock was hit by a pitch leading off the inning. Terry Taylor walked. Sibuhar struck out Livingston and Byington. That's got to make you feel pretty good right there. But then Carcione tagged him for a two-run double. And here he has walked Andy Duke. And Mike Easley will step in for the Aggies. Dave Jorn talking with C. Buhar. And it seems like in the last inning or so, C. Buhar's fastball and the breaking pitch is staying up mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. He's not getting it down like he was earlier in the ball game. And Jorn most likely just tell him, get back into your rhythm. You were doing mechanical well adjustment. There. Yeah. Mechanical adjustment, no doubt. And oftentimes a coach can see a small change a pitcher might have made. He may have missed too much on the outside corner, made a small adjustment that the pitching coach would rather him not do, and they just go back to what it was. We'll find out if what Jorn had to say makes an impact on Sibahar's performance. Easily struck out his first time. 0 for 2 in the first game. Pitch swung on, ground ball to short. Go to first in time. And the Aggies are finally retired here. Stillwell throws him out for Texas AM. They'll come up with two runs on one hit. There were no Arkansas errors and two men left. After three and a half, Arkansas two, Texas AM two. There's a lot more to taking pictures than meets the eye. And whether you're discovering the wonders of black and white photography or deciding what camera, lens, and equipment to buy, Popular Photography is the magazine for you. Each month, Popular Photography is packed with tips like how to stop motion, how to take better portraits, how to capture the drama of nature at its peak. Best of all, you get the most up-to-date buyer's guide anywhere. Yes, Popular Photography covers the photo world from every angle. And right now, as a special TV offer, you can get a full year subscription to Popular Photography for only $5.99. That's right, just $5.99. That's one half the full subscription price. So develop your interest in Popular Photography today and save 50%. Here's how you do it. Call now, 1-800-257-8888. 1-800-257-8888. That's 1-800-257-8888. Hockey fans, join us tomorrow at 12.30 for a matchup between Patrick Division rivals when the New Jersey Devils, Devils host the New York Rangers from the Meadowlands Arena. With a few weeks remaining in the regular season, the playoff spots in the Patrick Division are still undecided, so this game is an important one for both clubs. That's great New Jersey Devils hockey action tomorrow afternoon on HSE. The Yankees and the Razorbacks tied 2-2 in the rubber game of this three-game Southwest Conference Series. 5-0 Arkansas victory in the opener, a 6-1 Aggie victory in game two. And this one is all tied at 2-2. Nick Felix on the mound for Texas A&M, big left-hander who 
Game on in relief. Got the save in game one this afternoon. Big left-hander John C. Buhar on the mound for Arkansas. And we're dead even at 2 2 as Arkansas gets set to bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The designated hitter, number 24. Troy Eklund to lead it off for Arkansas. It'll be Eklund, Greg D. Alexander, and Jim Kramers for the Razorbacks. Kendall Trainer, if anybody reaches. And it was Eklund's bat that provided the first two Arkansas runs, a two run home run, his fifth of the season, back in the first inning. Fastball from Felix is up high. Eklund, the Razorbacks, DH. Had a great fall, hit 414, led the team in seven different categories, so he's got some offensive potential. Ball two. Boy, Eklund hit it a ton when he put it out of here. Just a shade to the left field side of straightaway center. Ball hit well over 400 feet. It's a fastball, the inside corner for a strike. Let's take a look at that home run swing of Eklund. Nice looking, got his body up over his back. Next pitch swung on and missed. Chase the high fastball, two balls, two strikes to count. Body over his back foot, weight not distributed too far out, and got everything he had into it. Didn't dip down quite as much as Reggie Jackson does, but hey, it did the job. And you said hit a ton, you're right. All of 400 feet. 2 2 delivery. And low ball three. The count is full now to Eklund. Leading it off for Arkansas here in the fourth inning. Eklund steps out and he wants to get a good grip on the bat. Dig in and let's see here what Felix brings home. The heater swung out and missed. Strike three. Power against power. Well, I tell you, they were just set up to challenge each other, weren't they? Eklund stepped out. And Sometimes that'll do something to a pitcher mentally to see a batter step out and kind of get himself set. Mm -hmm. All to break the rhythm. Maybe know that he's sitting back on a fastball or something, but Felix challenged him just through that five. Alexander watch the break, watches the breaking pitch up high. Fastball, good pitch, strike one. Count is even at 1 1. Texas AM ranks sixth nationally, Arkansas seventh. Next pitch in the dirt in front of the plate gets by Garcione. Two balls and a strike to count. Texas ranked fifth in the nation, so that'll give you an indication of the kind of baseball played in the Southwest Conference. Fastball misses inside three and one. Felix looks plenty healthy. He's thrown if you can add all of it together. He's thrown almost five or six innings now. Continues to keep the ball low. Still has good pop on the fastball. Next pitch swung on popped up behind home plate. Carcione has a bead on it. Now chases back and can't get it. It's very difficult to see from where we sit and where, from where the fans are in the in the stands. But once that ball gets up in the air, the flag in center field will give you an indication. We'll take a look at it later. But the wind gets a hold of that and does funny things with it. That's what happened with Carcio. He had that thing all the way, had a bead on it, and the wind just got it and shoved it away. Pulled it back toward the field, drifted away from him. Fastball down low, ball four, and D. Alexander, after getting new life, draws the base on balls. And another thing to add to that, 
not only does the wind play a factor, but when you hit a ball up above the plate, you never know what kind of spin is on it. And depending on the pitch that was thrown and where it hits the bat, generally the balls will drift back into the field when the wind's blowing the way it is. And Carcion just drifted just a hair at the end and got himself handcuffed. Jim Kramers takes a pitch outside for a ball. Kramer struck out his first time. We'll get a shot for that uh, that flag in center field here in a little while to show you just how this wind is blowing and gusting at times. Pretty good right now, as a matter of fact. Next pitch to Kramer, swung on, fly ball, center field, drifting back, Kirk Thompson. He is under it and will make the catch for at number two. Tell you what, Kramers didn't miss that pitch by much. He was just off of it. A little bit under it. But uh, the way that wind's blowing will give you an indication of how far it carried out there. Well, if there's a guy that can tell you about the wind, our cameraman up on top of the press box here at George Cole Field, protected by nothing. Jacket, perhaps. Pitch from Felix down low to trainer for a ball. One and nothing. Trainer reached on an error his first time up and then was caught stealing. Here's the next pitch from Felix up high for ball two, two and nothing. Trainer gets what you would call a good lead down at first base or did on that last pitch. He had one feet, one foot out on the artificial turf. Didn't get quite as far off this time. Pitches in for a strike two and one. You notice trainer's got that bandage on his right wrist. That the one that is giving him some trouble. It is the one that gives him a little bit of a problem. Pitch swung on fly ball way back. Way back, this one is gone. Home run for Kendall Craig. We can get another look at that one. Not only did that one clear the fence, but it hit the roof of that enormous wide building in the center in the left center field. That was a blast. It made Eklund's home run look like a pop-up. Trainer's fifth home run of the year. And Arkansas has gone back out on top by a score of four to two. And as oftentimes happens, a play that should have been comes back to haunt you. We think back to the foul ball behind home plate by Greg D. Alexander that Carcion was not able to field and allowed Alexander to get on base or allowed him a new opportunity and he drew the base on balls and then after Kramer's fly out Kendall trainer hits the two run homer so all of Arkansas's runs here in this game have been accounted for by the long ball and Thomas watches it up high for ball two two and nothing and the point I'm making if Carcione is able to make the catch of that pop up behind home plate. Kramer's flies to center and the Aggies are out of the inning. Don Thomas draws the base on balls. That's the second issued by Felix, the second this inning. That brings Rod Stillwell to the plate. Stillwell singled his first time up. Good look at Rod Stillwell. His older brother Kurt. A nice shortstop for the Kansas City Royals was in the Cincinnati organization. Kansas City about four hours north of Fayetteville. Conversation on the mound now as pitching coaches out to talk with Felix. Jim Lawler, right before he took out to the mound, he sent Steve Hughes down to the bullpen. He's a freshman from St. Augustine High School. He's a right-hander with a split-fingered fastball. 
and he will throw it uh, according to Lawler 60 to 80 percent of the time and if we get a chance to look at it we'll see just exactly how effective it is long fingers with that wide spread it can really put that hard spin on that ball he's uh, working pretty rapidly down in the Texas A&M bullpen too it's to Stillwell as a fastball on the inside corner for a strike. Two outs, Arkansas has added two here in the inning, a two-run home run by Kendall Trainer, his fifth of the year. Arkansas's other two runs came on Troy Eklund's fifth home run of the year, a two-run shot back in the first inning. Stillwell swings and fouls it off on the first base side, out of play. So Felix ahead of Rod Stillwell now, no balls, two strikes. He's thrown himself a pretty good number of pitches by now, including the relief from the first game. One and two thirds innings in that yeah. first game in relief. Trying to change speed time, stayed outside, one and two. And he's working on his fourth complete inning right now. It's been a tough one. Tough first and a tough fourth. Slow curveball stays upstairs again. And the count evens up at two balls, two strikes. Nice baseball facility here. George Cole Field in Fayetteville. Field entirely AstroTurf. Which is up high. Or shall I say just artificial turf. So many kinds of it anymore. Yeah. Felix, after getting ahead of Stillwell, no balls, two strikes, has run the count full now to three and two. Mike Easley holding Don Thomas over at first base. Throw over to first, Thomas back in plenty of time. Razorbacks, four runs on four hits. Texas A&M, two runs on one hit. Pitch swung on, fly ball to left. Should not be any problem for Darren Dacus. He is under it and will make the catch. Are retired here in the fourth inning, but not before they get two runs on one hit. There were no Aggie errors and one man left on base. After four complete innings, Arkansas four, Texas A&M two. This brand new British design dual driver, different from any other tool ever seen before, fits any drill, replaces screwdrivers, and combines all into one all-steel space-age unit. This you'd never attempt with a screwdriver. Just look at the clutch working. That's why you'll never damage the head of a screw. And that's why it's different from any other tool you've ever seen before. The secret is in the automatic clutch and torque control. With the dual driver socket adapter, use it with any of your socket sets and wrenches we're so certain of its quality, we guarantee it. For two years, this dual driver is not available anywhere else in the USA. Here's how to order. Plus free for the first thousand callers, multi-tool, nationally advertised for $9.99. To order the dual driver, call 1-800-453-1909 or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Dual Driver P.O. Box 2150-Z, Grand Central Station, New York, New York. COD orders acceptable. Order now. Guess where Bill is? Blue Chip Bill? Gotta be Wall Street. No. He joined the Peace Corps. I thought that went on with the 60s. Peace Corps. It's creating food systems in Africa, turning deserts back into forests, and fighting malaria in Asia. It's hands-on and hats off. It's making a friend. It's been tough. But for 25 years, the Peace Corps has been making a difference in the world. Bill, I can't believe it. Peace Corps, the toughest job you will ever love. Aim high, Air Force. Back at George Cole Field, Darren Dickus to lead it off for Texas A&M. 
We go to the top half of inning number five. Nine inning second game of the twin bill. First pitch swung on. Pop foul first base side. Randy Bob will give chase. Gets there but can't get to the ball. And it'll bound out of play. No balls and a strike. The count on Darren Dacus. He'll be followed by Kirk Thompson. And then we're back to the top of the order. And Chuck Knobloch. Well, like Kelly Zane and Randy Bob had a foot race over there to get to it. That's a quite a long run for for Zane. And Kendall Trainer was also part of it. All three wanted some action there. They have put another error on the scoreboard for Texas A&M, and I don't have it on my book. And there's a breaking pitch over the plate and I was going to say the only thing they could possibly do is uh, have charged Carcione with an error on that uh, pop up behind the plate and in that case I would make both those Arkansas runs in that inning in the fourth inning unearned runs. Fastball high and away two and one the count. Yeah that pop fly was definitely a playable ball. A little, a little tough from. Yeah, that's a tough one. But you got to make them in games like this. Steve Harris pitch. A little too high. Three and one. Going like early in the first three innings. See Buhar is falling behind the batters here in this. Now in the fourth inning and early here in the fifth inning against Darren Dacus. Pitch swung on, grounded to short. Up with it is still well. Long throw to first. Bob digs it out. And Dacus retired. So one out, and here's Kirk Thompson, who struck out his first time. John C. Buhar has struck out seven, walked two, allowed just one hit and two runs. Both of, both of them earned runs. Yeah, Thompson got fooled last time at the plate. You mentioned he struck out. He did it looking. Fastball's high and inside. I like the way he looks at the plate. Boy, he stands right in there, doesn't he? He says, bring it to me. It swung on, ground ball to third. Diving stop by D. Alexander. Gets up and throws him out. Excellent play at third by Greg D. Alexander. Definitely a big league play. You take a look at what Thompson did. He took the ball on the outside of the plate and just chopped it in the turf and planned to use his speed and took off. But D. Alexander had nothing to do with that. He said, well, I will make it vertical and get out there and take it all the way across. Body stretched all the way out. Nice play. Outstanding effort by the Alexander. We're back to the top of the order now. Chuck Knobloch, two out, nobody on. C. Buhar, off-speed breaking pitch misses, ball one. Knobloch flying to right in the first inning and then was hit by a pitch in the fourth. Stole the base, ended up coming around to score on the double by Tom Carcion. Pitch swung on, fouled out of play. First base side. Both these teams have dates. We have the top ranked Oklahoma State here in the next few days. Consecutive days, matter of fact. AM hosts them Monday and right back here at George Cole for a Tuesday night ball game. Is that game at College Station or at Stillwater? It's at Kyle Field. Is it? Third ball from Sebuhar. Strike call on the inside corner. I had to correct myself. I said Kyle Field. It's C.E. Pat Olson Field. Of course, as many people will be there, they'll probably want to put him in Kyle Field. I guarantee they'll sell that out. Two outstanding ball clubs. You'll want to see that. Texas A&M and Oklahoma State. Pitch swung on a grounded foul down the left field side. One ball, two strikes. And then Arkansas and Oklahoma State. Right back here at George Cole Field on Tuesday. And for those of you in Arkansas that might plan on attending that game originally scheduled for six o'clock. It has been rescheduled for seven o'clock. This coming Tuesday. Here's the pitch from CBR. Tried to 
throw it by him and it hit in the dirt in front of the plate came up and hit the umpire in the leg and he is still down back there that was hurt when he catches it off the knee it looked like it might have hit him off the side of the knee the Arkansas trainer out to talk with him see if he's okay shake it off Danny Mascarone. That sounds like an umpire. Danny Mascarone. That or a prize fighter. <laughs> Here's a 2 2 delivery. Swung on. Ground ball. Foul. Just outside the bag at third. While we were attending to the umpire, Chuck Knobloch's continuing to fight off pitches. One thing Mark Johnson really puts a lot of, a lot of emphasis on is Knobloch's ability not to strike out. He, very rarely strikes that he'll take two pitches he'll get two strikes on him but he's really tough and uh, you know but against Sebahar you never know you got a great pitcher out there on the hill it's a mental battle here here's a 2-2 pitch from Sebahar swung on line drive right at Kelly Zane at second base and my block is retired as are the Aggies in the fifth three up three down no runs no hits no errors and nobody left we played four and a half Arkansas leads it four to two spring, three generations of Carlsons gathered for a family reunion. Of those present, three have suffered from heart defects that just a few years ago could have been fatal. But thanks to research, like that sponsored by the American Heart Association, today there are more Carlsons to keep up with. The American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. I hope they never stop fighting. Me too, Grandma. Hello, and welcome to our special guest, McGruff the Crime Dog. Thanks, Dick. Now, do I understand that Neighborhood Watch programs have reduced crime in some areas as much as 50%? Ah, uh, that's right, but there's more to be done. Start a volunteer escort service for older folks. Aha, good news for the old folks at home, eh? What about the young folks? Start McGruff houses. Which are? Houses kids can duck into in case of trouble. For more information, write to this address and help... Uh, help take a bite out of crime. Turn your high school education into something meaningful, like a career in the United States Marine Corps. Call now. You wonder why all those hangy baseball players stay outside the dugout. Keep an eye on the bad girls there, too. Pretty young ladies who accompany the team. That's the pride of Texas A&M. Texas A&M Diamond Darling, Sandy Hastings. And Alicia, they made the long trip themselves. That's dedication when the girls will drive to Houston, catch a plane, and drive back from Little Rock just to make a three-game series. No question. Scott Pose at the plate to lead it off for Arkansas, bottom of the fifth inning. Scott Pose, Randy Bob, and Kelly Zane as Nick Felix faces the top of the Arkansas order. If anybody gets on, Troy Eklund would bat. Here's a pitch from Felix inside for a ball. Count evens up. One ball, one strike. Those grounded to third in the first inning and laid down the sacrifice bunt in the third. High and inside. Two and one. Pose holds that bat. Hands are right by that left ear. Holds it up high. Pitch is fouled out of play. Two balls, two strikes to count. That's a lot of what Coach Mark Johnson teaches, is keep the hands high. If you see a fly ball and then take a look down at Johnson, he usually has his hands on his hips because he's very disappointed. He preaches not fly balls. He really is a stickler for getting the ground ball line drive. Here's the pitch from Felix. Swung on. Tapped right back to him. He'll pick it up. Throw to first and pose retired. Some activity down in the Texas A&M bullpen now. Left hander up and throwing. 
First baseman, number 20, Randy Bob. Randy Bob steps up for Arkansas. It's Jeff Jones down the Aggie bullpen. Bob 0 for 2 in this ball game. Grounded out his last time up. To not block it short. It's been a good day's work for that young man. Nick Felix. Pitch is swung on and fouled back out of play. One ball, one strike to count. One out, nobody on. Kelly Zane on deck. Bob swings and drills it foul. Down the left field line, that'll bound all the way into the left field corner. Darren Dacus will have to go over and retrieve it. So Nick Felix will have to wait until he gets it back in before he can pitch again. Felix so far. Only been hurt twice and both times for the long ball. Both times two runs. Gives the Hawks the four to two advantage over the Aggies right now. Bob holds that bat high, kind of waves it around a little bit. Pitch swung on and fouled back out of play. He's an outstanding hitter. Good eye at the plate. He's been a good first baseman for Norm DeBryan's Razorbacks. Brian now in his 19th year at Arkansas. He's had only two losing seasons in those 19 years. Pitch to Bob. Swung out and missed. The catcher drops it. He'll throw down to first. And Randy Bob retired. So that is strikeout number five for Nick Felix. Kelly Zane steps to the plate. Zane one for two in this ball game. Doubled and scored back in the first and then popped out to the first baseman his last time up there. Slow curveball catches the inside corner and that had Zane looking. That was the first that's something other than that pitch. Yeah, that's a finesse pitch. Felix has been throwing the hard curveball. I think he's letting up just a little bit and trying to to place it in there. A nice breaking pitch on the inside corner. Fastball catches the outside corner. Talk about mixing your pitches. Slow curve on the inside corner and then the heater on the outside corner. No balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Just missed outside. You think 0 2 he'd go away or go up and away. He came right back at him. And Felix thought he had him. Here's the 1 2 delivery swung on and missed strike three. So Felix strikes out two in the inning. He's got three strikeouts for the ball game for Arkansas. No runs, no hits. There were no Aggie errors. And nobody left. We've completed five. It's Arkansas four, Texas A&M two. These days, people talk a lot about truth and labeling. At Budweiser, we started our own truth and labeling program over a hundred years ago. And what was true a hundred years ago is still true today. Announcing the biggest sale in Pettigrew Smith's 48-year history, and it's a monster. Get new Armor All Car Wax Paste, Liquid or Loose, only $3.99 each after rebate. Armor All protects and shines without scratching. There's store-wide savings during the March Monster Sale at all 43 Pettigrew Smith Auto Supply stores. So look for the new PS at Pettigrew Smith, Houston's original and still first. Monster Sale savings are available at these Pettigrew Smith stores and two and 
three and Could you four, save a life if you had to? Two. Tens of thousands of all heart attack four, deaths one, could be prevented two, if everybody knew Red Cross CPR. Four, one. That's why the Red Cross offers classes in this life-saving procedure. Not just at their local chapters, but right where you work. Learn how to save a life. Call the American Red Cross. Join us next Saturday as we continue our coverage of the 88 Southwest Conference season when Norm DeBryan's Arkansas Razorbacks travel to Houston, Texas to face the Cougars. Greg Lucas and former National League umpire Satch Davidson will be there to call the action, and it begins live at 12 noon. That's great Southwest Conference baseball action, twin bill style, next Saturday on HSE. Terry Taylor will lead it off for Texas A&M. It'll be Taylor Livingston and Byington here in the Aggie sixth inning. The number two, three, and four hitters in the order. First pitch to Taylor swung on and fouled back out of play. John C. Buhar on the mound for Arkansas. He's pitched a one hitter through five. Allowed two runs. Both of them are. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, strike call. See, Buhar has struck out seven in the ball game, has walked but two. Taylor 0 for 1, walked his last time. Pitch trying to hold up, strike three call. That is strikeout number eight for Sibuhar. Really, the only mistake Sibuhar has made is the hit batsman. And when he hit Chuck Knobloch in the uh, top of the fourth inning, lead off the fourth inning. Other than that, he's been almost flawless. He hit Knobloch, who stole second, and he walked Taylor. Struck out Livingston and Byington, and Carcione tagged him for a two run double. Here's the first pitch, or the first pitch to Livingston was a strike call, and the second pitch coming up here from C. Buhar. Fastball inside. Count evens up, one ball, one strike. Attention distracted right down in front of us. One of the youngsters running through the stands fell, and a nasty cut just below his eye, but they're taking care of him. Trainers are up to scene. Base hit right field. Livingston starts a new hitting streak <laughs> as he singles to right with one out. Now batting, designated hitter, number five. Nice play by Livingston, especially. Zane gave it his best. Scooted through on this turf, couldn't quite get to it. Here's Byington. Remember, this guy's got 10 home runs on the year. Subahar, got to be careful. Struck out his last time up. Glad to ride his first time up. Slow curveball, strike call. You got to like Byington, as young as he is, only a sophomore. He's so confident at the plate. He's, he's got a good, quiet body. He doesn't have a whole lot of movement except right before the pitch comes he starts to cock that gun if you watch his hand he brings it back just a bit to get a little activity going a little motion backwards gives him more push forward but he's so quiet so still and concentration is really really good for a sophomore Norm DeBryan would tell you that you have to like buying him. He's got to worry about him for a few more years. Slow curve, misses outside, count evens up, one ball, one strike. And the point I'm making is usually the young hitters get anxious and they like to exactly. go after the bad pitcher or will jump on that inside pitch that's going to break. Fine, usually won't. He'll stay off of it. Throw over to first base, runner is back. The base hit by Livingston here in the sixth was only the second base hit of the game for Texas A&M. Another throw to first. Keeping Livingston close. A 
Livingston has stolen six of nine bases this year. Yeah, it's kind of some sneaky speed. You wouldn't think that a, a power hitter like that could move along the base pass, but he picks it up and goes. Cebu hires pitch, swung on, base hit left field. Livingston will round second and hold there as Byington delivers a single. Cebu hires surrenders back to back base hits after one out here in the sixth inning. Byington went down and got that curveball before it broke off. He recognized it and saw it early and picked it up before it cracked into his right down into his ankles where it was headed. It was a good pitch. Livingston might have had a shot at third base. I doubt it. The ball hit to the left side, but Sibuhar's move home had Livingston making a move back to the bag at first. Right. So he had to stop and then take off. Yeah, to go from first to third, you really have to one get a good jump and two have some God-given talent to be able to move across the plane. Carcion has accounted for the two Aggie runs here in the game. Ground ball to short. Still well to Zane to Bob. Arkansas turns to double play. The first double play we have seen here this afternoon. Carcion grounds into the double play, and that ends it for the Aggies. No runs on two hits. There were no Arkansas errors and one man left. So after five and a half, Arkansas still leads 4-2. What kinds of investments can you make at Schwab? Ask a Schwab customer. I advise my clients to keep a diversified portfolio. At Schwab, you can invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, even CDs. And you can move between Schwab investments with one phone call. My advice, diversify the easy way at Schwab. For a free booklet, call 800-228-3393. That's 800-228-3393. Last year, Billie Jean King called it the best match she had ever seen as Chris Everett defeated Martina Navratilova for the Virginia Slims of Houston title. This year, they're back, along with Houston's Laurie McNeil and Cena Garrison, April 18th through 24th at Westside Tennis Club. Tickets are available now at the Virginia Slims office or Rainbow Ticketmaster at 530-3600. And be sure to catch HSE's same-day delayed coverage of the finals. Razorbacks will bat in the home half of inning number six, leading Texas A&M by a score of four to two. For Arkansas, it'll be Troy Eklund, Greg D. Alexander, and Jim Kramers against the left-hander, Nick Felix. Felix has done quite a job here for the Aggies this afternoon. The inning in two-thirds of relief work in game one to pick up the save, and then starts game two here and has gone all the way thus far allowed four hits and he's been burned by a couple of home runs Troy Eklund's two run home run in the first and Kendall trainers two run home run in the fourth Eklund the Alexander and Kramers against Nick Felix and they were a couple of blasts for sure they didn't take them to the 320 they took them to the 400 Pitch swung on, fly ball. This could be another one. And out of here as Troy Eklund. It's his second home run of the ball game, his sixth of the year. And Arkansas leads it now. I score five to two. Felix. Looked like he just served the fastball up, and Eklund was looking for it. And tagging. I got every bit of that one, definitely. Isolation. Right out over the plate. Got the arms extended. Good turn on it. Kept and drilled it out of here over the 385 side. He kept that head down, too. You could see his, you could see he hit that ball and saw right where it went off the bat. Well, Carcione visits with Nick Felix. We'll pass on some scores for you. Houston defeats Texas Tech today, 5-3. To Baylor defeats Rice, 4-1. to one. In the second game, Rice turns back around and wins 7-3. to three. 
and we'll try to get to Texas TCU. Texas, Texas beat TCU 10 to 3 first game with the doubleheader in the second game as TCU out on top. I think last score we saw was 10 9. Wasn't 10 9 in the last of the eight. Mark Johnson is out now as he walks to the mound. And that may be it for Nick Felix. Would be surprising if he makes the change right here because the right hander is up and throwing again in the Aggie bullpen, but Russ, he's just gotten up down there. He couldn't have thrown more than five or six pitches. So Johnson may be stalling for some time here. That's Steve Hughes, the freshman we talked about that got up earlier. He's the split fingered fastball pitcher. One other time, Jeff Jones, a sophomore transfer from Kennewick, Washington, was up throwing. He's a right hand. He's a left hander. Steve Hughes is the right hander. And it looks like Johnson's just buying some time. Well, the left hander was blocked from my view. I didn't even see him up and throwing. And now they're going to make the move, and the right hander will come in for Texas A&M. Troy Eklund. Tag Nick Felix with his second home run of the ball game here in the sixth inning to lead it off and give Arkansas a 5 2 lead. And that's enough for Aggie coach Mark Johnson to make the change. And Nick Felix will head for the Texas AM dugout. And he did a full day's work. Numbers on Felix five complete innings, gave up five hits and five runs. Struck out six, only allowed two walks, but what hurt the most? Three home runs, two two-run homers, and one solo shot by Troy Eklund. So Eklund has a two-run homer and a solo. And the other home run was by Kendall Trainer. That accounts for most all of the three of those five runs earned. The two that came in the fourth inning were unearned after the official score charged. Carcione with an error on a pop up behind the plate. Get a good look at Steve Hughes on the mound. He's a freshman from St. Augustine High School in Texas. He throws the split finger fastball. He locates his fastball. He likes to keep the fastball low, and that's what makes his split finger effective. The split finger is the pitch that the bottom simply drops out of. Looks just like a fastball at the last minute. It will drop severely to the ground. So if he can continue to keep his fastball low, the split finger will be successful. The defense against that is to move up in the box and try to catch it before it drops. When that happens, Hughes will come up and in and make the hitters stay honest, try to keep him off the plate, keep him back. It's a tough pitch to learn to throw. A lot of the big leaguers, big leaguers have tried it and haven't been able to master it at all. Just cannot throw that pitch. The hardest part, even if your hands are big enough, the hardest part is to be able to get control on it and to make it do what you ask it to. And you're, you're smashing it between your index finger and your middle finger and creating a spin with the release. Steve Hughes' first delivery to D. Alexander is down low for a ball, one and nothing. Troy Eklund with the leadoff homer. The Alexander will be followed by Kramers and then Kendall Trainer. Fastball. Down low to a nothing. The Alexander fly to center. Back in the first inning and then walked, of course, in the fourth. Off-speed pitch floats in for a strike. He's also th also throws a curveball, so he'll keep his hitters honest. When you talk split finger, you talk about a lot of dirty work for catcher Tom Carcione. Pitch swung on, ground ball to second. Terry Taylor has it, throw to first, and D. Alexander is retired. Kramers is 0 for 2. He struck out and flied to center. Now batting. Went 1 for 3 in the first game. Kramers, an important part of this ball club last year, of course. It ended up with a 51 and 16 record. 
Finished fifth in the College World Series. Pitch swung on. I got a piece of it popped out of the glove of Carcion. Another bad thing for the catcher when those balls are constantly dropping, the hitters are always hitting the top of the ball, so it's driven down in the dirt. Not only does he have to dig them out of the dirt, he's got to take them off his shins. But catchers like that kind of stuff. They like to get dirty and beat up. Oh, you betcha. That's the name of the game. Kramer's a pretty good hitter in terms of making contact. Last year, he struck out only 31 times in 240 at-bats. Slow curve misses inside. Hughes mainly brought in to draw out some ground balls and some double plays if the situation arises. He's a good ground ball pitcher. Outside for ball three. It's three and one. We talked about Arkansas's successes. Only two losing seasons under Norm DeBryan in 19 years. If now put together 16 straight 20 win seasons. They've had 17 20 victory seasons uh, overall. Eight straight seasons with 12 victories or more in the Southwest Conference. Two seasons with 50 or more victories. Eight seasons with 40 or more. And eight of the last nine years they've won 40 or more. Arkansas has never won the regular season Southwest Conference Championship. The Hogs have won the postseason tournament have played in three College World Series, but still looking for their first ever regular season Southwest Conference Championship, and Kramer's work shoes for the base on balls. Kendall Trainer is the Arkansas batter. Trainer is one for two, reached on an error, and then hit his fifth home run to drive in two runs his last time up there in the fourth inning. Hughes will have to be careful with trainer. Keep the ball down. Got a big strong guy like this, he can put it out again, easy. Off speed pitch in the dirt outside. Texas A&M, talk nah, about successes, nah. has won nine outright Southwest Conference championships, has won or shared 13 league titles all told. So Texas A&M has been a very successful Baseball team over the years. Dating back to the early days of the Southwest Conference. There's a strike call. The Aggies shared the conference championship in 1986. Their last outright championship was in 1978. And last year they were only one out from taking it all the way to the College World Series and making three Southwest Conference teams in the run. Arkansas, Texas, Throw and over. a &M. Throw over to first and the runner is back. The Aggies, as a matter of fact, won back to back regular season championships in 77 and 78. Finished 18 and 4 in 77, 19 and 5 in 78, and tied for first in 86. And they were 16 and 5 in league play. Off speed pitches up high for a ball. Hughes is struggling a bit out there on the mound. Not quite getting the location he'd like you. To be a successful split-fingered fastball pitcher, you have to set up your hitters and stay ahead of them. And that's not what he's doing. Here's the pitch. Now low for ball three, so it's three and one. The left-hander continued to throw a little bit down in the bullpen. Now right-hander has gone down. He's up and starting to throw. The left hander is going to throw, continue to throw. Uh, Jeff Jones would be the sophomore transfer. He's been up. He's the left hander. Down. Now he's back up again. As soon as they can get a catcher down there, the right hander will start throwing. Ball four is outside the trainer. Down to second base goes Kramers and Steve Hughes after. Getting the Alexander to ground a second is issues back to back three passes. Don Thomas struck out in the second inning, walked in the fourth. Rod Stillwell moves on deck. 
Take a look at the pin now. On the, on the left hand side is the right hander Anthony Dela Cruz, and on the right hand side is the left hander Jeff Jones. Don't mean to confuse you there. Jones, the left hander, Dela Cruz, the right hander. But the left hander's on the right, and the right hander's on the left, right? Yeah, well, I started them off wrong. Garcione is out to the mound to talk with Steve Hughes, and they've got their conversation completed. Good look at Steve Hughes. Chris Johnson on his way to the mound. He's, he pointed to the pin, so he'll make a change. Now the question is, which will they go to? Which pitcher, the righty or the lefty? I would imagine the left-hander. Let's wait and see. It is going to be the left-hander that comes in. He's been throwing longer down there than the right-hander who just got up a few moments ago. So Texas A&M makes a pitching change. And into the ball game is Jeff Jones. 6'1", 192, a sophomore from Kennewick, Washington. Steve Hughes a little disappointed as he trots to the... A&M dug out. He faced three batters. He got Alexander to ground a second and then walked Kramers and Trainer. And Mark Johnson apparently had seen all he cares to see. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Nine inning, second game of the doubleheader. And the rubber game of the series. Arkansas with a 5 nothing victory last night. Brilliant performance by Ray Harris. Arkansas pitcher fired a two-hitter at the Aggies. D. Alexander hit a pair of home runs in that ball game. Five nothing Arkansas. Aggies came back to win the first game of the doubleheader this afternoon, six to one. There you see Jeff Jones out on the hill. Transfer from Kenwood, Washington. He's a left-hander. In his arsenal of pitches, a fastball, a slider, and a change of pace. He throws the cut fastball. That's the pitch where you don't put as much spin on it. You just hold and pressure on a different side of the baseball. He's had some elbow surgery, and that's the reason Jim Lawler has opted to have him throw that cut fastball. Take a little stress off the elbow. When you throw the fastball, usually you'll break the wrist a little hard to get that needed spin on it. But his elbow is not being able to take that stress. I think both coaches in conversations with them before the ball game talked a little bit about what it was going to take to win the Southwest Conference and both pretty much agreed that it's going to take a, a good pitching effort from both these staffs to win the Southwest Conference title in 1988. You've got to play good defense. You've got to hit the ball, but you've got to get some great pitching. We'll see if Jeff Jones has the formula for the Aggies. He'll face Don Thomas with Rod Stillwell on deck. Runners at first and second. One out. Bottom of the sixth inning. Pitch low for a ball. Threw that one in the dirt. Sometimes a pitcher has a tendency, particularly in a situation like this, where you're behind, you come in late in the ball game. The first thing you want to do is show them that you're out there for business and Maybe throw one by him. So Jones, I think, just reared back and tried to throw that one by him, and it got away from him. Fastballs low and inside, ball two. He's got to be careful not to choke it off. Like you said, he gets out there, gets excited, and wants to show him the heater. And too often, he chokes it off down in the dirt. Ball three is low. That's not what a reliever wants to do. He wants to come in and throw strikes to help out the club. He's got a couple of men behind him and one in scoring position. Ball four is high and outside and three consecutive walks have loaded the bases for the Razorbacks here. And that'll bring Rod Stillwell to the plate. One for two today. Single back in the third. Fly to left his last time up. Bases are jammed. And another right-hander has gotten up in the Texas A&M bullpen. So that's a couple of righties throwing down there now. That'll be Scott Centala. 
He's a hard slider pitcher. Bases are jammed. Throw back to second base. They're going to call him out at second base. Doug Clark, the third base coach, is furious. He's out on the infield. The pickoff move will go one to six as they get Kendall Trainer. Let's take a look at it again. That's a great play here. Chuck Knobloch gets a running start. It's a timed play. And there you see the tag. It's hard to see. Knobloch's got his leg in the area where you would be able to see whether the hand made it back to the bag. That's strictly a timing play. It's something the catcher sets up. Shortstop and pitcher both acknowledge the play. Well, I'd be interested in seeing that one again. We'll see. Jeff Jones gets sent to work to Rod Stillwell. Nevertheless, a good break for the Ags. Take a bases loaded situation and knock it to first and third. Takes the pressure off. Fast ball down low for ball one. Renners at the corners. After Trainer is picked off for the second out of the inning. And Jeff Jones trying to get Texas A&M out of a jam here. Aggies trail Arkansas 5-2. Let's take a look at the pickoff one more time. Watch the shortstop cut behind. Watch Trainer's hand as he goes diving back to second base. You watch his hand on the bag. Well, you make up your mind. Hard to tell from one angle. Good job. Our camera crew. Very good job. Throw over to first base, and Thomas is back in front of your time. Scott Coe's on deck. Rod Stillwell taking a good long look at Doug Clark down at the third base coaching box. Jeff Jones, left-hander. Goes over to first again. Thomas is back. And perhaps Texas A&M is working on Stillwell's psych here as much as anything. Take a look at Thomas as a base, base running threat. Six stolen bases. Another throw over to first base. Thomas has not had a good lead on any of the throws over there. Just a few steps off the bag. Makes you believe they are working on still It's real unnerving to have a pitcher not throw to you. Fastballs outside to another. If a hitter had it his way, he'd like to get up there and get two or three good pitches, take his hacks, and go on to the base. You bet. The longer he stands, the more he thinks, and it can really be nerve-wracking. That's where you separate the good ones from the mediocre. 2-0 delivery, fastball, outside, ball three. And Jeff Jones in danger now, bloating him up again. Just got out of a bases loaded jam. And dangerously close to loading him again. A lot of difference, though, with Bases loaded and one out, and the bases loaded and two outs. Strike called on the outside corner to still Wells, three and one. That was a must pitch there. You put him on again, you've got more problems. You know the AM coaches are watching closely. It won't give Jones much leeway. He's gonna have to come through or they'll put somebody else in. Other throw over to first base. Outfield playing still well about straight away. Has only one home run on the year. He's not a power hitter. Five times now, Jeff Jones has thrown over to first. And five times, Don Thomas has stepped back to the bag.
find out what happens this time. Will Jones go to the plate or will he make number six at first base? There's ball four to Stillwell, and the bases are loaded again for Scott Pose, the leadoff hitter in the Arkansas lineup. That's the second walk issued by Jones and the fourth consecutive walk issued by A&M Pitching. Two by Steve Hughes, and now two by Jeff Jones. Now batting and pitching for Scott Pose, number 33, Ray Harris. Ray Harris will pinch hit now for Scott Pose. Ray Harris is an Arkansas pitcher. He really worked on his hitting during the fall campaign at Arkansas. You're looking at the young man who pitched a two hitter at Texas A&M last night and was the winning pitcher in that ball game. Harris pitched nine innings, gave up only two hits. He walked four and struck out six, and we see him in a pinch hitting situation here. 6'1", 200 pounds, senior three-year letterman from Jacksonville as the conversation on the mound breaks up. Pitching coach Jim Lawler headed back. A few probably not so kind words to Jeff Jones, but nonetheless words of support. On to Brian going with the percentages. He likes that right-hander in there against the left-handed pitcher. Harris waits and watches the ball blowing away. This has been a strange inning. Troy Eklund leads it off with a home run. Alexander grounds out to second. A walk. A pickoff at second. Four consecutive walks. Now a pitcher pinch hitting for your leadoff hitter. There's a strike. The count evens up at 1-1. You know, nowadays it's not, not often you find a pitcher who can hit the ball well. And since they brought the DH rule in, most of the pitchers have concentrated more on exactly throwing from the mound than swinging the stick. Arkansas had a pretty good hitting pitcher back in the late 70s, Tim Lawler. It swung on and missed. Lawler even in the big leagues, I think, pinch hit a time or two. It's a definite advantage. There are pros and cons to the DH rule. Some say it takes a lot of strategy out of the game if the pitcher comes out. One ball, two strikes to count. Somebody went out to the mound, I suspect, and said to Jeff Jones, hey, this is a pitcher pinch hitting against you. Yeah, you have to get him. Strike three, Harris is caught looking, and the Razorback threat has ended with only one run scoring. For Arkansas in the inning, one run on one hit. There was one. I'm sorry, no AM errors and three men left. After six, Arkansas five, AM two. kinds of investments can you make at Schwab? Ask a Schwab customer. I advise my clients to keep a diversified portfolio. At Schwab, you can invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, even CDs. And you can move between Schwab investments with one phone call. My advice? Diversify the easy way at Schwab. For a free booklet, call 800-228-3393. That's 800-228-3393. Beginning April 15th, Home Sports Entertainment will begin scrambling its satellite signal using Video Cipher 2 encryption devices. If you are currently receiving HSC signal via SATCOM 4 Transponder 11 and F1R Transponder 10, you'll need a Video Cipher 2 descrambler and proper HSC authorization to continue enjoying our programming. For information on licensing and descrambling authorization, or for information on how to purchase HSE, please call 1-800-4-HSE-NOW. That's 1-800-447-3669. 
5-2 Arkansas as Texas A&M comes to bat here in the top of the seventh inning. Defensive change for Arkansas. And after Ray Harris pinch hit for Scott Pose, Jay Carpenter is the new left fielder. Well, that's the right fielder there. That is Kendall Trainer. The new left fielder is Jay Carpenter in the lineup in place of Scott Pose. And Jay Carpenter will bat in the leadoff spot. John C. Bihar on the mound for the Razorbacks. Andy Duke at the plate. Strike one the count. The right on that pitch fouled it straight back. Got a good cut. Duke has struck out and walked. And there's a look at Jay Carpenter and give you a good idea of how that sun affects the left fielder. Great shot there, man. That sun right in his eyes. She looks directly west. Duke shortened up as if the bunt took a breaking pitch in for a call strike. Nothing in two the count. Aggies continue to dig a hole and Sibahar continues to shovel the dirt for him. Oh, two breaking pitch just misses. See Buhar's motion on his breaking pitch is exactly the same motion as his fastball. And it helps disguise that breaking pitch. That's no doubt what's given the Aggies so much trouble. So many have stood there and looked because they, they read fastball on the outside corner at the last minute that hard breaker comes in. Take a look at it. It's going to do the same thing it's been doing all day. Watch it start on the outside corner. Looks like a fastball. If you can't read the spin until, oops, right then, then you think, well, back to the house. Nine strikeouts for CBR in the ball game. He has struck out an Aggie batter in every inning but the second and the fifth. Foul ball, third base side. No balls and a strike. What Andy Duke did there is very typical. Of those nine strikeouts you speak of, only three did the Aggies swing. The other six, they stood and watched. So Zibahar's, that motion, Zach, definitely throwing them off, and they're, they're left guessing. And at the last minute, they just don't have time to react. Here's the 0-1. Outside for a ball, the count evens up. Fastball down low, two and one. Sibuhar is a big guy, one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet anywhere, anytime. Easy going. Good personality, sense of humor. But the fact that he's big, he's an imposing figure out there on the mound. That helps him a little too. Fastball sailed on him inside. Three balls and a strike. Along with his nice smooth windup, he's got that big body that often it'll hide that pitch as well. He's got a, a high kick. He turns his body a good distance, and the hitter doesn't, until the very last minute, get a chance to see that pitch. And with the oomph he has on it and the hard break on the curveball, the Aggies have got their work cut out for him. So far, they're not doing the job. Three one delivery, fastball. It's in front of the plate. And Mike Easley has earned the base on balls. That is the third walk given up by C. Buhar on the afternoon and brings Darren Dacus to the plate. Kirk Thompson moves on deck. Now batting left fielder, number 11, Darren Dacus. Aggies two runs came back in the fourth inning. A hit batsman. Chuck Knobloch followed by a base on balls to Terry Taylor. And then a double by Carcione after two were out. Drives them both home. Strike one call to Dacus. He's not too happy with the call, and he's letting the home plate umpire know about it. Uh, 
Arkansas with two in the first, two in the fourth, and one in the sixth. Lead it 5 2. Slow curveball inside. Arkansas has only five hits in this ball game, but they've made them count. They've been at the right times with runners on and been the long ball. Three home runs for the Razorbacks and counted for all runs. Fastball, low and inside, two and one. Activity in the Arkansas bullpen. We'll get a shot down there in a moment. I can't pick up the number. Take a guess and say 26. That would be Scott Osmond. Junior from Mountain Home, Arkansas. Ground ball right back to CBR. He'll go to second for one over the first, not in time. So Dacus is on on the fielder's choice. He raced easily one to four if you're scoring it with us. We'll watch it again. A little too slow here. The ball wouldn't hit hard enough back to the pitcher to give ourselves a, a good enough chance to turn the double play. Only one double play turned so far today. So there are two outs with a runner at first and Kirk Thompson is the batter struck out grounded to third. Pitch is a strike on the inside corner. Good fastball by CBR. Great location. Here's the double play situation that was brought up. Little chopper back to the pitcher. There you see your runner headed to second base. Easily. A good hard slide. And what some might say was a healthy takeout. He's doing his job. Doing his job. That's good baseball. No effort to hurt the second baseman. There's a strike on the inside corner. The count is now one and two to Kirk Thompson. I said Thompson ran it out to third his last time up in the fifth inning. Make it sound like a routine ground out, but it was anything but that. A diving stop by D. Alexander. Stretched out on his stomach. Jumped up and threw him out. There's a ground ball again. This one takes a big hop and gets by Alexander into left field. And Thompson is on at first and pulling up at second base is Dacus. We'll see how the official score rules it. it was the same type pitch. I have to believe that's going to be a base hit. And again, you mentioned you like the way Thompson looked at the plate. Again, he takes that ball on the outside corner, just chops at it. Just the puts good, it in play. The good hitters will hit it where it's pitched. And that's harder to do than it is to say. You get the tendency to want to pull all the time. And it's really difficult to stay back, especially when you have a guy like Sebahar who's going to throw a fastball. They're going to come with an off-speed pitch. You have to be on your toes and read the speeds and, and read the brakes. Mark Johnson wanted to talk with Knobloch. They met halfway down the third baseline, and the Texas A&M coach got his message across. Knobloch steps in now with two outs, runners at first and second. Aggies trail by three. Aggies now with four hits off Sebuhar. Pitch swung on, fouled back out of play. Lights have been turned on here at George Cole Field now as the sun has gone down enough to where the entire playing field is in the shade. So the lights have been turned on here. We're in the top of the seventh inning with Arkansas leading 5-2. Sibuhar delivers. Fastball is a strike call. Nothing in two to Knobloch, and Sibuhar is out in front. Earlier when we talked about Knobloch uh, being selective, taking a pitch or two, and then really bearing down not to strike out, we'll find out if he holds up to that compliment from his coach. He shortens up on his bat, and he'll shorten his swing. Probably open up his stands just a little bit, get a better look at the ball. Breaking pitches inside. One and two. 
Let's see if our camera can't pick that up. You talk about shorten the swing a little bit. Now Block's hands are almost right out in front of him. As he tries to protect that plate. See how he's dropped his right foot back. He's opening up so he can see a little bit better, take a shorter cut at it, try to punch the ball. Pitch swung on him. Missed strike three. He didn't do it like he was supposed to well, that time. Sibuhar got the fastball up, but he liked that. That's 10 strikeouts for Sibuhar for the Aggies. No runs on one hit. There were no Arkansas errors and two men left. After six and a half, it's Arkansas five, Texas A&M two. When you say no to drugs, you say no to harming your health. You say no to hurting your family and friends. You say no to getting in trouble. That's the power of that tiny little word, no. So be yourself and be proud of your independence. Don't let others run your life for you. Remember, it's cool to say no. Believe me, it feels good to be a winner. And you can be one too. Play it smart. Don't foul out with drugs. Catch all the excitement. Catch all the action on This Week in Motorsports. It's what's happening this week in IMSA, CART, NASCAR, Grand National, Winston Cup, Drags, AMA, Motocross and Boat Races. If it happened this week in motorsports, then you'll see and hear it on This Week in Motorsports. Catch This Week in Motorsports on HSE. Great NBA action continues on HSE tonight following Southwest Conference baseball. In Houston, watch Clyde the Glide Drexler and the rest of the Portland Trailblazers battle the Rockets in the summit. And in Dallas, the division leading Mavericks host former assistant coach Bob Weiss and the San Antonio Spurs. Great NBA action tonight on HSE. The Rockets to the Houston market beginning at 7.30, and should we run past 7.30, which is very unlikely, we'll be joining that Houston game in progress. We'll stay right here with the baseball game. The Mavs game will go to the Dallas-San Antonio Corpus Christi. Markets, that too, begins at 7.30. Randy Bob to lead it off for Arkansas. Bob is 0 for 3 in this ball game, has struck out twice and grounded a short. Jeff Jones, the third Texas A&M pitcher, is outside. It's one and one. It'll be Randy Bob, Kelly Zane, and Troy Eklund for Arkansas in the bottom of the seventh inning. Razorbacks lead it five to two. All the Arkansas runs have come on home runs or as a result of home runs. Bob pops it up in the infield. Third baseman Livingston is in to make the catch. And Randy Bob retired. Jones showed a lot of poise last inning. He came in after Eklund had hit the home run, got the Alexander to ground down, loaded the bases, picked off man a second, loaded him up again, and was able to strike out Ray Harris to end the inning. A tight spot. He worked himself out of a jam. Kelly Zane doubled back in the first and scored on the first home run by Troy Eklund. Zane is one for three, watches the pitch low and outside. Struck out his last time up there. Pitch from Jeff Jones. Ball two is down low, two and nothing. When the sun goes down, it's pretty chilly here, and the crowd is thinned out considerably, but still a lot of fans here to watch Arkansas and Texas A&M. Fastball, a strike call, two and one. Action slowed down considerably in the Aggie bullpen, but I can promise you those same pitchers are on standby. Here's the two-one pitch, strike two call. Seems like Jones has found a groove now. Count evens up at two balls, two strikes. Kelly Zane was letting the home plate umpire know that he disagreed with his judgment. Yeah. 
2 2. Strike three call. Catches the inside corner. And again, Zane talking with the home plate umpire to no avail. That is strikeout number two for Jeff Jones. The next batter, designated hitter, number 24, Troy Eklund. Troy Eklund is the batter for Arkansas. Two for three in this ball game. He has two home runs, two runs scored, three RBIs. The other time up there, he struck out. So he has sandwich decay between a couple of long balls. Takes a pitch inside, ball one. And it's, that's a pretty hefty sandwich because when he hit those balls, he hit them far. Six foot, 175 pound junior from Kansas City, Missouri. Played at Park Hill High School. Ball two is down low. Hit 292 with 12 home runs, 45 RBIs for the Razorbacks last year. He's an all conference basketball player in high school. Here's the 2 0 delivery. Swung on, ground ball to third. Livingston has it. Long throw to first, and he's got him. And Arkansas goes down in order in the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Coldfield and Fayetteville, Arkansas 5, Texas AM 2. contestant from Cincinnati, Ohio, Mary Haney. Yes, you, Mary. This is your chance to enjoy a more colorful life by subscribing to TV Guide. Now let's show Mary what you'll get with TV Guide. To start, you'll receive complete listings for network, local, cable, and pay TV. You'll also get special features, movie reviews, a sports calendar, inside stories, and more. Okay, Mary, are you ready to go for it? Home audience, you two, join Mary, get TV Guide. Johnny? Call toll-free 1-800-221-4600 to get 30 weeks of TV Guide in your mailbox. 1-800-221-4600. Pay in three easy installments of just $7.17 each. Send no money. You'll be billed later. Call now. 1-800-221-4600. Congratulations, Mary. The subscription to TV Guide is yours. I saw there was an image behind drinking when people had drank that they looked older and sophisticated. I was 11 when I lost my virginity to a guy who was 17, and I was drunk. Sometimes I'd sleep in the woods. If I didn't sleep in the woods, I slept on the corner. If I didn't sleep on the corner, I slept at someone's house who I didn't even know. Hey, yo, alcohol is a drug, and you can get hooked on it. And the younger you start, the more damage you can do. If you want to be somebody, have a family, have a future, just say no. Say no and say yes to your life. Well, there you see it. The Hogs with two runs in the first on a two-run home run, two runs in the fourth on a two-run home run, one run in the sixth on a solo home run. Five runs, five hits, no errors for Arkansas. Two, four, and two for Texas A&M. John C. Buhar set to pitch to Terry Taylor. And the pitch is inside. Taylor trying to spin away. It just got a piece of him. So Taylor hit by the pitch. Trots down to first base. And... The Aggies have the leadoff hitter on. Sec That's the second hit by pitch Sebahar has had today. Let's take a look here. Hit Knobloch earlier in the foot on the curveball that got away, and this time uh, I'd say that was a bruised shirt. Clipped him right there on the inside. First pitch to Livingston is ball. Livingston is one for three in this game and if he joined us late Scott Livingston had his 21 game hitting streak broken in the first game of the doubleheader singled his last time up pitch on the inside corner for a strike you can see Scott shake his head on that one he wasn't quite happy with where that pitch ended up strike or ball I think he just did didn't like the location on it, so he left it alone. 
pitches outside from CBR two and one I guess if you're going to pitch to the good hitters and give them something they're going to have trouble with it's the good fastball on the inside part of the plate right around the hands that'll tie them up more than any other pitch I suppose high and inside the ball three three and one your point very well made and the best thing about Livingstone according to the scouts and all the coaches he's got the quick probably some of the quickest and strongest wrists of any conference hitter he can wait so much longer than any other hitter and at the last minute his he explodes through the zone and those wrists really get a good pop so he can come around on that inside pitch waiting as long as possible before he reads it CB is 3 1 right down the heart of the plate now it goes full now three balls two strikes and let's keep an eye on Terry Taylor over at first base with Livingstone a good man with a bat usually puts it on the ball let's see if Taylor might be taking off here with nobody out throw over to first base and see Buhar thinking the same thing let that runner at first know you're thinking about him keep him close and perhaps keep him from scoring on the extra base hit if you can keep him close Taylor with a good lead he's got his right foot out on the turf so he's Got a good amount of space out there. C.B. Harris fastball had Taylor diving back for first base, but he came home instead, and the pitch was outside to Livingston. That is the fourth walk issued by John C.B. Har this afternoon. He has struck out 10 and allowed just four hits. He has gone all the way for Arkansas. Norm DeBryan, the Arkansas head coach, is out of the dugout and on his way to the mound. C. Buhar does not look too happy. He knows what that normally means when DeBrian comes out to talk. You'll see Norm talking first with Jim Kramer, the Arkansas catcher. What he's asking him is, what do you think? He still got his stuff? Is he throwing hard? Well, regardless, they make the call to the bullpen and coming in for Arkansas is Mark Swope right hander 6'1 170 he's a freshman out of Spring Hill Kansas John C. Buhar gets a well deserved round of applause as he leaves here he has pitched the whale of a game for Arkansas so C. Buhar is gone he Officially will go in the books as pitching seven full innings. Given up two runs thus far. Both of them earned. He allowed four hits. He walked four and struck out ten. Responsible, of course, for. The runners on the base paths. Terry Taylor and Scott Livingston. Take a look at Swope's record. Four games at three and one. 2.21 earned run average. 19 strikeouts, eight walks. Twenty-four and one in his high school career at Spring Hill, Kansas. Give you an indication of what kind of pitcher Mark Swope is. 163 strikeouts in only 87 innings. Those were his high school numbers from a year ago. He has pitched 20 and a third innings this year and struck out 19. A lot 15 hits. Walked eight, struck out 19 in 20 innings of work. Swope three and one. No saves, but an opportunity here to pick up his first save of the season. Be a feather in his cap for sure if he could. Here's John Byington. One for three on the afternoon in game two. Wide to right, struck out, and singled his last time up there. A 
off speed pitch from Swope is the ball. Slow curve ball is drifted outside. Byington, a power hitter with 10 home runs, stands close to that plate. And what he's telling the pitcher right there is the plate is mine. Hmm. There's a pitch in for a call strike. Count even set 1 1. A lot of times you'll see those power hitters stand very deep in the box and out away from the plate so they can get those arms extended. Byington stands up close. He wants to be able to cover it all. Swings on the next pitch. Fly ball center field. Don Thomas is there. Under it will make the catch. Runner will advance from second over to third. That's Terry Taylor. Livingston stays at first base. So the Aggies have runners on the corners now. First and third with one out. As Swope gets Byington. You get a good look at Terry Taylor at third. Mark Johnson just crossed through the screen. Here's Tom Carcione, who's driven in the only two Texas A&M runs of this ball game with a double back in the fourth inning. Grounded out his other two line times up. Grounded into a double play his last time up. 6-4-3. Fastball, the strike call. Got a little movement on that pitch. Seems to run in just a just a bit. Has been an excellent fastball. This pitch swung on fly ball deep right center field. This one has a chance. Thomas back on the track against the wall will make the catch but it'll drive a run home as Carcion flies deep to center field. The sacrifice fly gets a run home. And Texas A&M is cut into the Arkansas lead. It's now a 5-3 ball game. Say it many times, you got to hit that ball right square on to drive it out of a park, especially if you're hit towards center field. And Carcione just missed that one as Thomas was feeling for the fence as he stopped to make the grab almost far enough. Nevertheless, still brings one run in. Fastball inside for ball one. Swope is a freshman. He's going to have to come up with a pitch or maybe even two pitches to be an effective college pitcher. He's going to get his fair share of outs with that good fastball, but you get these good college hitters up there looking for that fastball and start challenging them. Then you're going to get tagged a time or two. Byington flied to center and then Carcione drilled one to right center. But for a freshman looks looks good especially with the movement on that fastball if you watch it should tail in just a little bit. Strike two call. Andy Duke caught looking at a strike. Pitcher's advantage on one two. See how Swope handles it. Slow curveball, strike three, and Mark Swope comes in and does his job for Arkansas. The Aggies, though, will get one run without the benefit of a hit. There were no Arkansas errors, and one man left on base. We played seven and a half. Arkansas leads it five to three. This brand new British design dual driver, different from any other tool ever seen before, fits any drill, replaces screwdrivers, and combines all into one all-steel space-age unit. This you'd never attempt with a screwdriver. Just look at the clutch working. That's why you'll never damage the head of a screw. And that's why it's different from any other tool you've ever seen before. The secret is in the automatic clutch and torque control. With the dual driver socket adapter, use it with any of your socket sets and wrenches. We're so certain of its quality, we guarantee it. For two years, this dual driver is not available anywhere else in the USA. 
Here's how to order. Plus free for the first thousand callers, multi-tool, nationally advertised for $9.99. To order the Duo Driver, call 1-800-453-1909 or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Duo Driver P.O. Box 2150-Z, Grand Central Station, New York, New York. COD orders acceptable. Order now. American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. I hope they never stop fighting. Arkansas leads it by two as the Razorbacks bat in the bottom half of the eighth inning to lead it off. Greg B. Alexander. He'll be followed by Jim Craner, Kramers and Kendall Trainer. If anybody should reach, Don Thomas bats fourth in the inning. Jeff Jones, the third Texas A&M pitcher, trying to put a stop to. Arkansas's run production here and all of the runs have come as a result of home runs. Jones set the Razorbacks down in order in the seventh inning. Inside for ball two. Arkansas swept Texas A&M the three game series at College Station last year. Pitch swung on, fouled at the plate. Aggies felt like that might have cost them dearly on down the road and mm -hmm. undoubtedly would like to win two out of three from Mark and Sawyer. And if we could look ahead, this possibly could be one of the key series later on down the line. Next pitch swung on, fly ball, deep left field, way back, it is out of here. A fan caught it. And Greg D. Alexander, who had two home runs against A&M last night, hits his eighth of the year here in the home half of inning eight for Arkansas. And the Razorbacks have gotten the run back that A&M picked up in the bottom of the seven. They're rather in the top of the eight. It's been long ball for this second ball game. I tell you what, Arkansas has brought the sticks to play the second game round. They decided they didn't like losing, I guess. Every Razorback run in this ball game, all six of them have been accounted for by home runs. A couple of solo blasts and two two run home runs. You look at it yourself. Down and in, kept the head over it. Contact and just took it out of the park. Last ball from Jones, low it away. Ball two, it's two and nothing. And Here's a guy standing in there who can hit it just as far as any of them. Jim Kramers. 0 for 2 in the game. Struck out in the second. Fly to center in the fourth. Walked in the sixth. Fastball down low.